Yo! How goes it, my dudes? What is up? What is up? All right, everything is good to go. You are sick? Oh no, that's no good. All right, let's have a look and see. Chaos, I sent you a link for an indie horror movie. Ah, I'll definitely check that out. I'll, me and the missus do like watching a horror. Chaos, type a bit louder. I can't hear you. <laughs> I wasn't even at my desk. Plus, this and Chaos parody music is... <laughs> Devastator, Snowy, Leaf, Woodpick, Gaming and Movies. How's it going, folks? Chicago. How are we doing? Ooh, psychological. Interesting. Even better. All right, my first Steam Deck port review is done. It's uh, out to members already, and in a, about mm, half an hour, 45 minutes, should go out to the public. But it's my first attempt. Got some good settings, so I hope you guys enjoy it. But how have we been today? Mine. Poor deal is a. Uh... Hey, look, I don't have time to sit down and spend 50 hours playing every game, so. I do like gaming on my Steam Deck, and finding the best settings is always annoying. So I'm assuming there are more people like me out there. So. I'm, I'm hoping it can help people out. I managed to get a rough average 30 frames per second. It does drop in places, but yeah. Because they have nothing better to do. Hey, Jay, I appreciate it. It, look, it looked wonderful with all the settings off, right? Everything set to low. <laughs> It looked absolutely beautiful. All right. Well. It does seem that uh, this one is really weird, right? Oh, she's doing movie nights. Interesting. She needs to make sure that uh doesn't get done by YouTube for those, though. YouTube is very picky. It's not like uh, Twitch. But have we been since Tuesday? Good, bad, what are we playing? Who's trying, who's got Dragon's Dogma 2? Anyone jumped into Rise of Ronin? Ah, 
Ah, Discord moving, I think. Right. I've only played about maybe 10 hours of Skull and Bone so far. I like it. What do you think of uh, Final Fantasy XIV? By the way, Devastator, there's a event going on at the moment. It ends today, I think. Today or tomorrow. Uh, little ladies, I think I might have missed it through all this ordeal, which is a bit of a shame. But there's another event that starts tomorrow. Having fun with Final Fantasy XIV? Nice, nice. Wait, was there a future game show that I missed? Whoa, 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 pump the brakes. Are you saying that you're a cabbage? Of all the races you could pick, you decided to pick the cabbage. The live stream is going on right now. Let's check it out. Does anyone have a link they can send me? Is it any good? Cabbage Master Race? <laughs> Well, here's a fun fact for you, Devastator. There is a property in one of the areas that you can't access yet. But there is one building that only the Lullafells can access because the door is too small. Only Lullafells can go in. Hey, they have the most manner after all. Let's see. No, I don't want to go into history. I can't pick it. Uh, let's see. Future game show. Is there no link to it? Loud. By the way, does anyone actually want to watch this? Or is this like a big no-no for people? I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, is it even on? Let me turn the music off. I'm trying to find the audio. 
One sec, I need to set the audio. In antiquity, the building blocks of society have been based on democracy. Debate and we can watch this for five, ten minutes, see what it's like. But if it's trash, we can move on. Powerful way to make a point. Arthur, wasn't you there when I played Sandland? Don't fall. Don't Last stop. stream? Land on Tectone and get him out. Whatever that was. No! Time no, to die, Amy. No! No! Oh, oh. no. I'm alive! Oh, I'm alive. Oh, I'm alive. Help! Help! I'm getting ping pong. Tectone, please! <laughs> the demo is available on Xbox. The demo is already out for Xbox. Rumble so we tried the demo out. PC and mobile this April. Our next game has musical contributions from none other than Rick Astley. And we promise this isn't some elaborate bit. We wouldn't want to let you down like that. Yeah, we'd never tell a lie and hurt you. That was cringe. Mom! Oh, what is it? Are you sure we can't go back to our old house? You'll soon get used to it. Think of it as an adventure. And who might you be? I'm Simon. Don't you remember me? Do I have to remember you? Look here. This is a prequel. So what do you think I should do? The little miscreant. I have no idea, Devastator. I demand to know who we're dealing with. I should probably change the title of the stream, though. Come on, Simon. Get the magic books. Defeat the big evil wizard. Save the magic world. Easy, right? Okay, title updated. If, folks, the don't forget to like and subscribe. To PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, I PC, appreciate you. Apple and Linux in 2024. So point and click it into your wish lists. Now, we know you love a good teaser. This again. I know you were in a game with an active battle system, but this is a strictly turn-based production. <laughs> I like production. him. Okay. I'll, uh, yeah, that's Ben Star. From now on, um, I'm just giddy about the next world premiere, which is a collaboration between. He's an absolute idiot. Incredible. <laughs> which is why I love him so much. Like us, um, Come on, what right. is this guy? Right. 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 Do you know what I mean? It's a good gag. It's a funny joke. Why won't anyone laugh? Where did the laughter go? Why do we not laugh anymore? Hey, Steve. Apparently this game is supposed to be uh, better than Rise of Ronin. Project Mango is a collaboration between Tukana Interactive, developers of Dorf Romantic, and YouTube animation maestros Kortzgesagt in a nutshell. It's coming to Steam in 2025. Up next, we've got the latest update on Outpost Infinity Siege, a first-person shooter with base building and tower defense elements. Mate, there's nothing to confirm. It was always coming. Forget our old doomsday scenario. In the end, our pride and avarice was to be our downfall. He did, Jay. He did. He did really well in 16. And yet, when evil reigns supreme, heroes rise up in defiance. They the glimmer of hope within the encroaching darkness. Outpost core link established. Commencing synchronization. 20%. 50%. 100 Steam Deck Street? Fire. 
It's supposed to be a new stream, but I didn't even know this was on, so uh, we're just having a quick look at it. Hey, Quackers. I'm a lot better today now that my ordeal is over. A huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. That was a separate video. It kind of came out three minutes ago. I mean, it looks okay, but a bit generic. Officially coming to Steam on March. They're trying to do the Matrix. We're taking a trip to the Scottish Highlands now to hear the latest on Farewell North, an atmospheric puzzle adventure starring... I have not. I'm going to download it soon. Okay, Chesley. I think it's time. I was involved in quite a few... Uh, let's just say... Uh, things today that I couldn't get out of. Will do, dude, because me and the missus watch a lot of uh, foreign horror movies. I mean, this is totally going to get me demonetized, but whatever. Do you know what? All of these games try to create that kind of experience that Journey gave you, and they just fail. I don't think any of these games will ever hit that peak that Journey gave. I don't know if any of you played it. If you haven't, you absolutely should. It is such a good game. It's really short. Like four or five hours, but it is a phenomenal game. Our next game will have you praying to the gods for help as you take on hordes of Draugr in PvE combat. My name is Mark Jacobs. Uh, I am the CEO slash chief creative at uh, now Unchained Entertainment. We're currently working on three things, Final Stand Ragnarok, Camelot Unchained, and the Unchained Dangerous. It does, Quackers, it powers, does. Uh, I love the, the storytelling as now. well. The it told a wonderful future, story without any story. Also, of course, the name change. It's been a while for us to get where we are. But the key thing for us is we never gave up. And now we're at the point where not only is FSR ready to launch, but our engine can do things that no one else that we've seen so far is able to do. And what we wanted to do was large scale battles, 500 or more people, 30 frames a second. My name is Michelle Davies. I'm art director at Unchained Entertainment, currently working on Final Stand Ragnarok. The really cool part about it and where its core is, it allows for many more entities than you see Anime? in other engines. You to took the words right out of my mouth. Final Stand Ragnarok, it is the few versus hordes, thousands. You took the words right out of my mouth. Like, who is going to buy this game? Like, no disrespect to the developers. And silly and snarky at times. But now, who's going to buy that? doesn't try to take itself too seriously. We're also going to have what uh, we're calling First Look Fridays, where we're going to offer players a sneak peek at things like new scenarios, new champions, uh, modified scenarios. Hey, maybe we'll make this a little harder, or maybe instead of a thousand you know, NPCs coming in a wave, we're going to make 500, make them a lot more powerful. We're going to try different things. It's we, AI. No matter how Devastator. well we it's AI. Out, the players are going to have much more interesting things to say once they've played it. 
we want to Look, see what Toph they like, what they has like. boobers. And the way FSR has been built and my character's ass is, so is easy for us to make just, changes, you know, in a scenario. You know, being able to do that real time with real players. Gives us such At least the games I play has a lot of eye candy. Considering the scale is always going to be, you know, our um, strong suit. If you would the like games to I play what it feels gives like nightmares to SBI. In that moment, the middle of Helm's Deep fighting the onslaught, uh, you're really going to like Final Stand Ragnarok. The goal right now is to launch on Steam. This? Uh, this is just a mobile game. PC, of course. And this is literally a mobile game. I don't care what anyone says. This is a mobile game. Like, working, uh, what are they trying to do here? Like, this is a waste of time. Fairly quickly, uh, after that. And this is coming to Xbox as well. I think it actually is available on Xbox Ragnarok right now. Launch on PC this month with console versions to come in the near future. It's time for the ones to play montage, which is where we cover a series of awesome games that will be available to play right after the show. Just head to the Future Game Show Steam page where you'll find all the featured demos in every game in today's broadcast. May your wish lists runneth over. Hey Quackers, if you ever need any help with that stuff, just let me know, dude. I'll help you out. New Star GP, a rip roaring retro racer with arcade sensibilities. Okay, this is cool. And this is Realm of Ink, a mythological action roguelike where you call on the power of adorable ink pets. Not interested. And here's Go Go Town, no. a cartoon sandbox where you rejuvenate a rundown city. No. Up next is Follow the Meaning, a peculiar point-and-click puzzler starring a detective no. with a delightful trilby. Angerfoot is sliding in now, a lightning-fast no. FPS that puts the kick into kick-ass. Or how about Duck Paradox, no. a disco-dancing bullet-hell platformer where you rescue your web-footed workmate. Rounding out the crew is Deathbound action RPG where you combine the personalities of fallen warriors mm, and remember no. all these games are available to play for free right after the show thanks to everyone who worked with us to provide a free demo for the ones to play section and speaking of free games why not take a look up here if you're one of the people lucky enough to claim one of these, she doesn't you've even want to be there. Access to a time-limited playtest of Go Go Town. So get Go Go going. And I suspect they're all Go 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 gone now. So, here's a gameplay trailer for TerraTech Worlds, a multiplayer survival builder perfect for fans of Valheim and Satisfactory. <laughs> You got bad reviews. I think it reviewed in the 60s. Hey, Remy. Nah, I just think everyone wants a piece of Ben right now, Jay. Everyone wants a piece of J uh, Ben. He's a cool dude. He has great character. He's got good charisma. And uh, he knows how to have fun. He's entertaining. I mean, look at him compared to that woman who just can't be bothered to be there. I'm Rev feeling engines, good, Remy. How are you? Worlds is coming to Steam Early Access on the 22nd of March. Which is tomorrow. Which is, to even the way he speaks is funny. We've got a psychedelic rhythm shooter where you empty your clip to the beat. One, two, three, Target acquired. Target's location. Working on. I mean, if you like these sorts of games, that can be good. So many choices. I didn't even know this was on Leaf. I didn't even know this was on. I've got a whole agenda of news to get through still. But I figured we'd go watch this a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't go on too long. 
A review I follow. Review I follow. Safe. I love a good remix. Robo Beat is coming to Steam and Epic Game Store on May 16th, 2024. So shoot it onto your wish lists. Also, a demo is available right now, so you can dive in after the show. Now, if you fancy yourself something of a uh, outlaws, show, I do want to pick that up. Next game I am interested you. in outlaws. The operator has you analyzing evidence to solve impossible, sometimes improbable cases from behind a computer screen. Welcome to the FDI, Mr. Tanner. As our newest operator, your role is to support our agents in the field. Using cutting edge software, investigate mysterious crimes, dig for clues, Un uncover the truth. Good luck. <laughs> nope. The truth is out there. You just have to know where to look. The operator is coming to PC. Look at her. She just doesn't want to be there. Okay. It's time to jump into our ones to watch yearbook. Which platform are you going to play Star Wars? Showcase. And this entry comes with us. Uh, it'll either be Xbox or PC. Before we get into it, a little scare warning for those afraid of uh, mm, vicious storms, uncertain circumstances, infestations of other worlds. Exactly, Leaf. She's like, seek to destroy uh, you and everything you hold dear. Uh, the North Sea. <gasps> I guess you heard me. Emerging from sinister depths, the Chinese room's first-person psychological horror game still wakes the deep, has found a home. Hey, I can play on anything. I've got everything. To watch yearbook. From the narrative magicians behind Everyone's Gone to the Rapture and Amnesia, a machine for pigs, Still Wakes the Deep is a rich tome of terror that is she to push your panic buttons. <laughs> Quackers! <laughs> Players step into the steel toed oh. shoes of an oh. old rig worker who must evade shrieking stalkers and look for answers in the isolating, labyrinthine halls of a 1970s drilling platform stranded in the North Sea. This looks like that level from Destiny. And to sate the appetites of our scare hungry viewers, we've been working with the team to bring you a terrifying new trailer that will reveal when you can get your hands on it. Chat, that was really scary. I still can't believe you went. What are you thinking? Going to that place. Wish you hadn't got yourself into this mess, but you did. You can you run forever. I know you were just trying to do right by me, so I need you to do what's right by us. Now, please, Cass. Shit. I am so tired of fighting. I just want it to be over. Is it me or has games over. just gotten worse over the years? If you don't deal with this, then we are done for good. I love you. But I won't wait forever. Uh, uh, what do you mean by can play to platform? Is it can it play any platform? Like multi platform or cross platform? What do you mean by that? And where are you going? Worry going be here, Stalker 2. You heard it here first. Still Wakes the Deep is coming to PS5, Xbox, and PC on June. Uh, we sh I don't know if we're going to get a, a battle crush now. separate a stream for Stalker 2. Brawler. I mean, I think they should, like but as the earth crumbles I think we should it. get a Stalker 2 event considering what they went through, but.
for Windows, you can port it straight over to Xbox without any problem. Because it runs on the same XDK. And games like this don't have any trouble whatsoever. That was Battle Crush. And the second beta test begins today, March 21st, on Steam, Android, and iOS. It's hard to believe we've got yet another world premiere coming up next. <gasps> so soon after the last one. That's more <laughs> unlikely than a marble in Rosaria. <laughs> so soon after the last one. I mean, if it wasn't for Ben Starr, this show would be rubbish. I'm having fun just listening to him trolling. Every idea starts with a single line. Springing forth from our ambition. Yeah, I looked at Stellaris. That is not for me. Of our imagination. Star Wars DLC release date is between April and... Represents a world of possibilities. A world of dreams. Uh, I would I would hope that it's running 60 FPS. The Xbox needs to start pushing the hardware. Xbox isn't as weak as the PS5. It just needs competent developers to uh, optimize for the hardware. That was your first look at Blueprints, a lazy developer game where you create the world you explore. It's coming soon to PC. All right. Up next, we've got an We're not lazy developers, but bad optimization. Like set in a world plagued by cosmic horrors. Here's Hordes of Hunger. Games better, they would run better. Wish lists at the ready because Hordes of Hunger is coming to PC in 2024. I did leave Storm, and my and Steam Deck review should be out right now. Ladder. Here's Linkito on YouTube. I do believe that the OLED can run it around very close to 60 or at 60. Rabbi, what I'm saying is developers who make the Xbox run at 30 FPS aren't using the hardware. They're not optimizing it properly. They, they just need to do a better Nikito job. Nikito invites you to connect on PC this summer. Hey, Sam, uh, before we get on to the... Uh... Uh, LCD is about 10% less power, right? The so OLED has 10% more. Hmm. Why does Ben have a teddy bear called Samantha? <laughs> I, I mean, I, just, I told you that in confidence. Mm. <laughs> okay, I'm going to need some time. Well, that's okay, as we've got another dazzling world premiere up next. Let's roll that while I go sort him out. That does sound like Jill. Peggy 18. No. This might sound bad, but Jill looks much nicer.
Sim City in hell, kind of like living in the UK, right, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. Worshippers of Cthulhu is worth right, PC in 2024. Our next game pairs Scottish folklore with a beautiful hand drawn art style. Oh my god, Let's these games are trash! Yep, Steve. Quackers, this is live. We are doing this shit live. Rabbi, if the developers put the work in, all games can be 60 FPS. But it's up to the developers. Later this year. Right. Here's a new trailer for Spine, a cinematic gun fu brawler. Ooh, you take down an this looks cool. With the help of a talking backbone. I take it back. I take it back. Chris, welcome back, dude. Long time. Yeah, I take that shit back. I take it back. I take it back. Not even their jiggly ass is saving this one. That's all I'm saying. Not even that jiggly ass is gonna save this one. I hope so, Rabbi. I hope so. Man, I wouldn't even insult Spider-Man at this point with guns. I don't know, man. Kong had that triple hit combo. Kong had that triple hit combo. Spine will be spin kicking its way onto PC, PlayStation, and Xbox in 2025. Moving on to PC and a Xbox. More sinister. We've got the latest update on Indica. A psychological puzzle game where you play as a rogue nun. Alright, maybe if this is a nun in suspenders, thongs, and some lingerie, that could work, right? No? Just me? Alright, we're halfway there. Condoms jumping around. Oh. I go against you. YouTube has a rewind button just for that. Leaf, rewind and check it out. Is it in my power to intervene in your design? Is this a part of your plan? Vanny? GTA 6 is just that important. It is the biggest game of the decade. Ilya will live. I recommend you don't rewind. You can see I'm trying. Hey, it's the lunch. He's always behind my shoulder. Uh, I've heard a few things about the upgrade. I heard big thing. I heard end of April we're gonna get a big update. Update, but I think we might have just got one now with uh, what's his name, Jez confirming the handheld. 
but there's another big update coming Friending at the end of the year. Tiefling. Tiefling. Like, how many times do I have to tell you? Ben, it's a tiefling. It's different from a demon. Hasn't gone so badly for me. That was Indica, which is coming to PC in Q2 2024. I hate to break it to you, Ben, but this next one is our last trailer. It is a super cool world premiere, though, which takes the sting out of saying goodbye. I'm deeply sad about this, but somehow that feeling is being slowly usurped by the promise of a new video game to look at. Curious. Uh, I think this is the last trailer, apparently, so we can check it. We're going to go there straight after. Peace is a fairy tale. You end your stream with this. Something you tell young rats to stifle the nightmares. It's high time you woke up. For the nightmare is upon us. As war raged uh, Rabbi south, nothing. Uh, consoles won't run that game at 60. In the north, endlessly clawing from one year to the next. With VRR, Xbox might have a bit more better performance, but that resident. game won't run 60. It's going to be you so CPU you know suffering. Bottleneck. You know nothing, my liege. Wings black as death. GTA will be Things so sharp as steel. for most. And a thirst for vengeance that will not sate. There's a time for heroes. That time is over. The kingdom needs a warrior. Forged of the north, and as cold as the snow that shrouds these lands. A rat. Carved from iron. Red for battle. And unleashed in war. And so, a new tale begins. Tales of iron, too. Whiskers of winter. Wish list now. <laughs> I mean, they're going to be the one that's that crying. That was your first peek at Tales of Iron 2 Whiskers of Winter, which is coming uh, to PC. PC Avenger comes out one year later. PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch in 2024. But with that, we will have to bid you all adieu. Uh, it's not going to run 60 on PS5 Pro, Jay. Smiling uncomfortably wide. Uh, nothing, it's just... <laughs> It's not nothing, actually. Um, it's not the end of the show, because we have another trailer. It's like a one more thing thing, you know? All the big showcases do it, apparently. Right. And you uh, you just kept this to yourself the whole time. You know, we've been, mm. um, we've been emailing about this, and we've been, like, Amazing. rehearsing it, and I just, I feel like I, I'm in I know, idiot. I know, and best of all, it's another world premiere. Gotcha. No, not gotcha, Sam. You've embarrassed me. Gotcha. No, Sam. Gotcha. Not gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Not gotcha. gotcha. Don't go gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. 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 Okay, this looks interesting. PC will run it at 60. 
you can brute force it on PC. Industria 2 looks cool. That was Industria 2, which is coming soon to PC. So make sure it's on your wish lists. And no, no more funny business. That really was our final trailer of the show. For real this time. It's been an absolute pleasure, Sam. Likewise, Ben. But before we make good on our karaoke promise, we'd like to thank everyone for tuning in wherever you are. Uh, we'd also like to shout out the people behind the scenes who've made this spring showcase a reality and our partners over at PAX. Remember to head over to the dedicated Future Game Show Steam page to add the games we've covered to your wish lists. Finally, hey, Devastator, go, thank you for that $2. Like I sent you a review for a letter in the dark. If it's not too long a review, we'll definitely check it out after. Countless layoffs and a growing fog of uncertainty, somehow coupled with headline news about huge profits. We simply couldn't have a show like this full of awesome trailers and demos and presentations without the hard work uh, people. Xbox and PS5, uh, Xbox series x won't run it at 60. And I, we want to acknowledge just how difficult it's become to uh, i don't even think the ps5 pro will in this industry so for everyone it's not that big of an improvement storm, regardless of what you do we just want to say that we see you we're thinking he is really good as clive that things are going to get better so please support your favorite game joshua <laughs> Hey man, 480p. Let's uh, let, let's go back to the days of uh, CRT TV, 1024 by 768. I mean, if we're going back to that level of stuff, there's really no point. Uh, th there's going to be no patch that's going to uh, make it work. The only thing Xbox can hope for, Rabbi, is for the game to run at a locked 40 FPS, which could should be possible and if it is then with VRR enabled you can push it to run smoother at 60 yeah but we're talking a game as massive as GTA I don't think they're going to want to sacrifice the goodness of what they've got made <laughs> we'll see Jay we'll see they couldn't even get Dragon's Dogma to run at 30 <laughs> and, you, and you're hoping <laughs> there you go see Steve is on the Xbox Series X X it will run 60 what do you think of this? Because this is important, right? This is really important. A lot of people glossed over this and don't, you know, don't think this is a big deal. But this is a really big deal. 
Why is this a big deal? If the Justice Department wins this case, why is this a big deal? The reason why this is a big deal is because if the Justice Department wins this, well, I get they've got monopolistic practices, but what they're saying is they've got an illegal monopoly on smartphones. How can you have an illegal monopoly on smartphones when Android exists? You've got different brand phones. You got, you got Samsung. You got uh, Huawei. You've got loads of different devices. Apple isn't the only device. It's the most popular device, but it's not the only device. Now, the reason why this is important. Uh, hey, Sanchez Gaming. Uh, if you're talking about this, this is what we're referring to. The reason why this is important is because if if the US government, the Justice Department, wins this, this gives Epic every ammunition it needs to go after Steam. Because Steam is in the position Apple's in. This will give Epic every ammunition they need as precedent to go after steam and they will go after steam because essentially there's no difference between what's happening between here and what's happening in the pc launcher market right apple doesn't have a monopoly They've got a product, it's super popular, and it's selling. Steam has a launcher, it's super popular, and it's selling. That's it. They are identical in service, in terms of what they're doing on the market. If the US Justice Department wins against Apple, this is going to open floodgates. Not only will Steam be attacked, but Sony will be attacked as well. Anyone that's got a huge like position in the market will be open season. So I'm not sure how much I actually want this to succeed. Take it easy, Quackers. Uh, well, right now they've got they've got no real grounds. And in my opinion, the Justice Department doesn't really have any grounds to go on Apple just because of their smartphones. But that's why this case is so important. Because if they win, for whatever reason, whatever technicality, it sets a precedent. And that precedent is going to be used everywhere. This is going to be a really important case to keep an eye on. Now, for all of you Lies of P lovers out there, that's amazing, right? Lies of P has over 7 million players worldwide. They didn't say how many sales they've got because I'm guessing 5 million of those are on Game Pass. But still, they've got 7 million players. <laughs> so I thought this was pretty cool. It's a really good game. Devastator, um, if they win, it's going to be a massive shake-up to the, the way everything works. So, I'm not, I'm not on the side of them winning. Hey, look, Jay. 
That's why I play Tower of Fantasy. What grounds does he have though, Sanchez? Just five fifty seven. Excuse me. Sorry, I haven't slept in like two days. That's actually pretty accurate. That's what it's all about. Uh No idea, Remy. I have no idea. Uh, you'd think that that would be one of the games that they'd show. Exactly, Sully. I'm rarely on the government side. This is no exception. Yeah. All right, let's have a look at Jez. Because someone said Jez confirmed something. My man, Jez. Jez! Jez? I also think this might be one of the lowest priced Xbox Series X deals we've ever seen. It's now down to $439.99. Is that the lowest deal in the US? I thought it was down to three four nine ninety nine at one point. It's a reply. No. No. Bad about. Are you sure? I really want that hard drive for no reason whatsoever. Just because it's got the Starfield branding colors. I want an Xbox handheld. It's time. As much as I like my ROG Ally portable hardware that plays all my Xbox games with a simplified UI, not having to worry about system settings with improved battery life. Well, that's the key one, right? I don't think technology exists for improved battery life. In other words, a pick up and play experience. Would it be native or more in line with the portal? Native, is this it? Hey, Il Real Tito, how's it going? No, nah, Transformers uh, Reactive isn't dead. I'm guessing that was it. Because I'm not saying what I'm not seeing anything else. All they said was native. Mostly use the portal when the daughter or wife are watching TV. I mean, it's not confirming anything. So apparently, PC Gamer decided that. They are going to take a really cool conversation for the... He said you will get that to Paris. I mean, we're all assuming and kind of knowing that we're going to get it because of what Sarah Bond said. She kind of confirmed it anyway. The biggest generational leap, that's pretty much indicating the handheld anyway, to be fair.
Look up. Look it up. Was on C-SPAN. C-SPAN. I don't even know what that is, by the way. This isn't some porn site, is it? Okay, so it's definitely not a porn site. Yeah, I have no idea where it's going to be in here. Confirm this is not a porn site. <laughs> Uh, this could take a while to find. If you have a link, send a link. But I really liked Mike Yorubara's response to this. I really disliked this article. These are incredible designers at GDC explaining what almost every big game goes through. And it does. A lot of games go through this. Outlining where they think they and the industry can do better. And all this uh, article, you know, this GDC presentation was doing is saying, you know, what under what was involved with the whole uh, making of Starfield and how it became this big thing that they've never really done before. All the other games that they made were contained in house, but this one had like six different studios helping make it. And obviously, uh, <laughs> when you've got that going, Communication from six different studios is going to be a hell of a lot slower when you, instead of you being able to just walk over to the next desk and speak to someone. But PC Gamer decided that they wanted to weaponize this. Starfield's lead quest designer had absolutely no time and had to hit the panic button so the game would have a satisfying final quest. What a bunch of assholes. But I'm happy that Mike Yabara called it out. You know, it's clear intent, sad. You know, when you, when, you, when you now start having people like Mike coming out and calling PC Gamer a piece of shit, you know they really are a piece of shit. Edge, PC Gamer, Sega Saturn Magazine, Nintendo Power, Dreamcast Mag. I mean, PC gaming used to be good. Not anymore. They're just garbage. And do you want to know what this part here is? This part here? Where is it? I was both implementing the main quest and leading the quest design team. So I had absolutely no time. So they took this... And twisted what he said to create a clickbait timeline, a thumbnail. That's what he said. How does that match? Had absolutely no time and had to hit the panic button so the game would have a satisfying final quest. Cheers, Dev Dev. I mean, they, they really are hot garbage. They really are. But this article uses a headline that is potentially misleading. The final quest was enhanced for satisfaction, not hastily made, despite development constraints and was not a last-minute addition. Multiple developers across the industry have raised issues with this article. <laughs> Oh, you love to see it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Developers. Developers are hitting out at this article. Oh, shit. That is, that is gold. That shit is gold. That shit is gold. Gotta love it. That is brilliant.
That shit is fucking brilliant. I mean, Starfield itself is a good game, right? The issue it has is that the core design of Starfield was the problem. The whole seed system that they've intro that they decided to go with, which is the same system that No Man's Sky uses, right? Where you put a seed and it auto generates the area, you know, the planet that you're jumping onto. And that was their problem. Because the moment you auto generate, and because they're using their old, you know, engine. They don't have the fluid fluidity that was of No Man's Sky. It's a very, very archaic engine that they have. So loading was inevitable. I mean it's like the nightclub in uh what's that what's that town? I forgot its name now. You go to that futuristic area, I forgot its name. But you go there, and on the outside, the nightclub is tiny. You go inside, and it's huge. It's got like four, f two floors, bathrooms all over the place, rooms all over the place, neon, that's it. But on the outside, it's like a small little box. That's done that way because they're loading a seed. So it, it looks small on the outside, but you're loading into an instanced area, and that's the problem. It was just it was just a design choice that they made, and I think it was the wrong design choice. Now I think if they actually um, if they minimize the loading, and they didn't make you fly for a ring twenty five times, I think it probably would have been uh, a little better accepted. But overall, it's a good game. I mean, I haven't finished it yet, personally. I'm too busy just exploring planets and shooting shit and having, you know, just enjoying my time. I really do need to finish it at some point, though. But, yeah. This is just sad, right? That's just sad. Hey, 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 Steve. Go back to your car mine, bro, man. But that's just sad, right? <laughs> uh. Have I played Morrowind? I did years ago. And Oblivion. Years ago. Never my games. Did the Series X use... Did Capcom use Series X's power? Not really. It is, JB. It is. But why not give people the option of... Not having ray trace illuminate, you know, illuminous lighting. Why not give people the choice between running games like this that dropped into the twenties of FPS? I mean, this isn't like a Steam Deck or something where I find it acceptable. This is a next generation console.
Yeah, but not to the extent of Starfield. Again, it's a design choice, and to me, it doesn't really matter. But it got a bit, it was a bit much for some people. No way, really, Leaf Storm. That's crazy. But yeah, Xbox generally maintains a 40 FPS on this. And that's really good, by the way, because it just means uh, VRR is uh, going to work really, really well. But do you know what's really funny? Uh, Starfield's frame rate be unlocked somewhere between 40 and 60. In cities, it would be still around 30, maybe... F I reckon it would be around 40 in the cities. Once you're outside on the planet's surface, then it will be somewhere like in the 45 to 60. Yeah, that's what I remembered, Woodpit. Well, Kill Paxton, if your new TV supports VRR, if you run this game, VRR should be an option that you can use, and this will run a lot smoother than any other version. So, this game will... Basically, this game runs best on Xbox Series X. Of course, if you look at the ponies now, PS5 averages 38 FPS, so it cannot run VRR because it needs to be 48 FPS and plus. Xbox about 40, so VRR is enabled. PS5 has higher resolution than Series X. Shadow slightly better on PS5 than Series X. But do you remember back in the day when uh, Xbox gamers had the lower frame rate but higher resolution and they all laughed saying frames better? What's up with Red Gaming Tech now? What's up with this dude now? Because he was one of them. He was one of those people that said, Oh, I'd much rather have frames than... I, I'd much rather have frames than better resolution and graphics. But now... I'd much rather have fr resolution and graphics than frames. It's almost like they've been given a gormless smack in the head. Complete and utter dodo bellens. Why does everybody's analysis for IGN it runs better? So IGN looks at frame rate, right? IGN looks at frame rate. And if you're looking at frame rate, it runs better on the Series X. It's that simple. I mean, I've heard people struggling to run this game on a 4090 graphics card. I don't know what they're doing with Dragon's Dogma 2, but if a 4090 is struggling to run this game, there are serious problems there. 10 FPS. Oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, the Series S is, uh, yeah. It's a lower resolution, sure. But it still runs better. You're right. You're right, Steve. When the Series S runs better than the PS5, that's how you know shit is just bad, right? That's how you know that the, the mighty Goliath has fallen. Uh, 
that's because IGN uh, has their dick stuck inside the power socket of PS5. You know, you you have the head of IGN sitting there with the PS5 like this and just using it as a, uh, you know, a sleeve with the power socket just going like this on a daily basis, trying to get some lube inside it. That's, that, that's pretty much what he's doing. Rise of Ronin. Six out of ten. I mean, I don't even think IGN could have given this game more. The only people giving it high are the ex the PlayStation lovers, and that would be too bad. I mean, I don't even know what Screen Rent is doing. PlayStation Universe, no surprise there. These two are PlayStation centric, no surprise there. PlayStation centric, no surprise there. Push Square is surprising, but they've been more neutral for years now. Push Square used to be so pro PlayStation, but now they're accused of being an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Avatar The Last Airbender is coming to Roblox. Ooh, DLC. Before ultimately deciding to cancel it because the team's heart wasn't in it. Okay. Told players not to use the arc thrower, arc shotgun, and Tesla tower because they currently cause game crashes. Is anyone seeing similarities with this company and Bungie? I'm starting to get serious uh, Bungie vibes here. I'm starting to get serious bungee vibes here. Like, every patch they do, they break like a million things that just destroy the servers. Just make sure you don't say that on social media, Leaf Storm. You will get murdered. I don't know. But let's have a look at Steam charts. Hell Devils 2! We still got a healthy player base. 226,000. It did drop to 80 in the morning. See, in our time in the UK, no one's. It drops down quite low. Right, it drops to double digits, and it starts going up, and it's around like midnight when it hits its peak. And as you can see here, like you know, man, at one point it dropped to seventy-five thousand, 
and then it goes up and up and up. And in about two more hours, it's going to hit peak. And then it's going to start declining again. Mate, it's been going like that for ages. It's not just new. Look. 109, 150, 94, 86, 83, 75. It's nothing new. Just people in the UK aren't, in Europe, aren't playing it as much as those in the US. Thinking back to a time when 83 was a mid game. Mid. So what does that make this one? If this was mid, what is this? Brick, you're forgetting that it's 9 a.m. for me. It's 10 p.m. for someone else around the world. Just because it's 9 a.m. for me doesn't mean it's 9 a.m. for everyone else. There you go. For Sonoe, it's 6 a.m. right now. So by the time it's 9 a.m. for us, uh, Lethal Company had its time. That game was praised to high heaven last year. But it's not popular anymore. It's the same reason why no one's talking about Power World. You know, it came, it had its time, and it left. Would help if I could spell lethal though, right? That was a demo? Thirty one thousand peak twenty four hours ago. But you know, it's most of all time, we'll see. But that's still a good number for them. You know, it, that's still a good number for an indie game. People think that's a bad number, it's not. Nintendo have taken down C emulator now too. There'll be another five that appears. Larian Studios won't make Baldur's Gate 3 expansions DLC or Baldur's Gate 4. They're not going to even do a Baldur's Gate 4. Damn. Will Smith fronted zombie survival video game Undawn has bombed, according to a new report. Wait, there was a game called Undawn? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you what? What the fuck? Did anyone in chat know about this game?
we live in a new reality. When the world is a nightmare. And our fight to live begins. We must venture out and rebuild. Nope. I don't know where we'll see this. Play on dawn. Look, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being funny, right? I'm not being funny. But if I was a betting man, if I was a betting man, my money's on this dude over here. My money's on this one over here to bitch slap him from here to kingdom come. I don't know about you guys, but my money's on this one to win, and him to have a really, really bad day. <laughs> Because he's about to have a really, really bad day. Because it was at that moment he knew he fucked up. And he fucked up royally. Because that bitch that was coming from this hand is going to send him to another continent. All you're going to hear is, yo! <laughs> Just going to fly into orbit. <laughs> it's like, how could you possibly think that going mano a mano with that is going to end up with you having any form of any success at all? With a knife as well. My dude has got razor sharp fingers. And you're going with what looks like a twig. To go against it. There's Will Smith. Legend. I have not seen the gameplay for this. No way. No. Is this it? Nah, this cut. This game is old.
Yep, that about sums it up. Have you seen the article where the director for I Am Legend 2 said they wanted to make it more like Last of Us with overgrown cities and jungles in place like New York, even though that's what I Am Legend is? Yep. You see, waifu, they tried to, but it's just, it's just not on the level of waifus that we're used to. I didn't even know that was a game. Sonic, Knuckles and Sephiroth, okay, okay. Oh, season one is coming out for Suicide Squad chat, if you're interested in that. I know there's a lot of you out there that are really interested in this. So guys, this was 2015 GDC, right? Lots of Xbox consoles, tablets, PCs, devices. Right? That is what it is in 2024. I'm sorry, but here, they actually care about Xbox, the brand and everything. Here, they just don't give a shit. That to me just tells me that they don't give a shit. That's awful, man. Now, what I'm saying is this is 2025. And uh, Steve, did you go to the expo in 2019? I'm not sure if you came down to London to go to it. They had the Xbox event in 2019. That was phenomenal, dude. It was just before COVID. Um, and it was so good. They like they went all out. Such a great day. Me and my kids that went, we absolutely had a blast. And then they're obviously uh, COVID hit, so they couldn't come back the following year. But that's, I mean, the vibe is different, right? You can't deny it. That vibe is just different. Microsoft hide the Xbox logo everywhere they can. Just watch the Halo series. No mention of Xbox. Like, I don't get it. And then what I was told uh, today is that we should be getting some news, which we, we should we should be getting a, some piece of news coming uh, before the end of April. We should be getting some news at, uh, before the end of April that should wow Xbox gamers. But the really big news is coming at the end of the year. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm bored of waiting. I think it was called Xbox 09019. Let me see if I can find it. Nope. 
I can't even remember what it was called exactly. It was I've got the placard somewhere. Uh, next gen is coming in. You know, two years. I can't remember what it was called. Xbox XO 2019. That's what it was. See, I remembered it was something like that. This was such a good showing. I mean, is it early? Is it really early? Next gen consoles have been out for, what, three years now? So in two years time, they'll have hit five years. That's not early. If they go for seven years, those machines are gonna be older than the T-Rex and they're extinct. You know, 2026 is the latest they should be looking. With how technology is moving, five years is enough. Investing once every five years is fine. In my opinion. But I miss the days of this, when they made a massive spectacle of things. But what I do think is a waste of money and what I, you know, I'm, I'm happy that Xbox isn't doing it, but they do need to do something, uh, is no mid-gen power increase. That's, that's just double dipping. And I don't think that's needed. If you have to release a mid-gen, release a next generation console. You know, don't just do a mid-gen console. I think that's stupid. <laughs> Anyone remember this game from the Xbox 360 era? I'm really surprised that they're remaking this. I'm really surprised that they're remaking this. I mean, that that's cool, it not being your type of game. I'm just happy that they're still looking at these older games and saying, you know what? We're going to refresh them and remake them. It's cool. In today's climate, she won't look like that. <laughs> Brought to you by Sweet Baby Ink. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Steve, come on. Uh. So this is another game that I'm actually genuinely surprised is coming to Xbox. Uh, it's a remake. This one I'm really surprised that's coming to Xbox. Normally these games completely skip um, Xbox. So... 
maybe they are doing something good in Japan. Maybe they're finally uh, starting to edge their way in. I don't know, but normally these games instantly skip Xbox. So it's it's good to see that it's not skipping Xbox. It's a card-based RPG with a lot of waifus. Sully, you're not, it's not bad. I mean, you might not, you know, you're not wrong. But I think this holds a much bigger significance, right? Because, you know, the developer for this isn't a big developer, right? A publisher, sorry. Inti Creates. And the fact that they're choosing to release it on the Xbox could be a good sign for what's to come in the future. Oh, no, no, JB, I'm not expecting there to be an, a resurgence of uh, Japanese games coming to Xbox like we had with the 360 era. But what I'm saying is we've seen a lot of these games instantly skip Xbox in the past. But the fact that this one hasn't skipped is a really, really good sign. And hopefully this isn't just a one-off and this is something that, you know the Xbox team can build on. And if it does well, they can use this as, you know, as a showcase to say, look, this game isn't exactly the most popular game out there. Not many people really know about it, but it sold X uh, amount of units and they can use that as a base to encourage other publishers to release their games on Xbox. This is a super niche game. Super niche. So, you know, you're not expecting the millions and millions and millions of sales. But at the same time, it's cool to see that it is coming to Xbox because normally it skips it. And I think this is a really good, positive movement. Like, we've, you know, we've been criticizing Xbox for their lack of, you know, Japanese uh, etiquette, the lack of Japanese uh, push, their lack of anything in Japan. And companies have been skipping them or they've been skipping games. But, you know, credit where credit's due. Hopefully this uh, makes way for more developers, publishers to uh, release games on the Xbox platform from the, you know, from the Far East. I think this is good. Ant game. But yeah, this one... Uh, I mean, I can play it. It is very, very weeb waifu. Do you want me to play the trailer? Do you really want me to play the trailer? Okay. Steve, keep it in your pants, okay? No, we don't. We don't want to know what's going on over there. Special announcement: A battling RPG experience. Get in search and destroy missions. I'm gonna split you in half. Explore the digital landscape, gathering characters from different game universes. Am I still as cute as ever? Use the muses' songs to succeed. Each fictional game I told you it was very weak. Theme songs, 50 in total. Use all of your card's special abilities to solve the mystery enveloping the virtual world. Your life is forfeit. Glitch your way to victory. A card battling adventure through the eras of gaming. Card and shell. In development. Inti creates. Maori. 
<laughs> Leaf, St Leaf Storm, I'm sure we've all played Weeb, yeah. And Weeb, I like it. No, no, it, but what I'm saying is it's cool to see that we're getting this all stuff. Eh, I don't think AI is there yet. AI is being way too overplayed at the moment for coding and stuff. But it's cool to see, and I think this was a this was I think this is a really really big moment that could uh, be used. But I agree, um, Brick. Xbox does need to snipe an anime open world uh, gas game. Sony seems to have them all right now. Honkai Star Rail, Tower of Fantasy, uh, Genshin Impact. I'm guessing they're going to get Wuthering Waves. They're going to also pick up a Enfield as well. No, Devastator, I did not. All right, chat, what do you think of this? Because I think this is big moves by Epic Games. I am really happy to see this. And I am happy to support this behavior. Epic Games offering developers 100% of revenue... If their game is exclusive to Epic Games... Well, I'm not happy to support that part. But I'm happy to support this part. Offering 100% of the revenue for the first six months. So, you know... Epic loses money. So no one cares. Publishers... Make 100% of the revenue, which means, you know, it helps actually cover costs of the game. So developers don't lose their jobs because they're the ones that always get blamed for it. And a game's max sales are generally within the first few days anyway. Uh, the six months should be enough to easily cover a decent game's development cost. What does Epic get out of it? They get your patronage in hopes that you will continue buying from them. A customer base. This is called a lost leader. So what you do, what Epic is doing here is they're taking a loss in revenue, in sales, and trying to win goodwill from you as a consumer who are, who, you know, like this practice because it's pro developers. Because at the end of the day, losing 30% of the actual revenue could be the difference between, you know, 100 people being laid off and not 100 people being laid off. So for all of you that are always up in arms about developers losing their jobs or people getting laid off because sales targets weren't hit, this actually helps them hit those targets. So this is a good thing. Obviously, Steam would never do this. And as people say later on uh, down below, Steam doesn't need to do this. They've got enough sales so they can milk it for all they want. I mean, I'm not saying the words. They are. Uh... I think Alan Wake 2 has now recouped its cost, so it's not too bad, Steve. I mean, it would have recouped it faster on uh, Steam, but it's recouped its cost, and that's all that matters. I've got no problem with Epic. Also, for they had a pay-as-you-go model. I don't know. I don't know, uh, Brick. Oh, they, I'm really not sure. I'm not 100% sure. 
I mean, the AI art, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. AI art is scary good now. AI art is really, really fucking good. If you go on X, there's like a whole fucking community just for that shit. Right? How is it slow? It's so fast. What do you guys have? Like anti-epic bots on your machines to stop it from running? Or do you try to convince yourselves that it's slow so you can justify hating it? No, no, I, I agree, Steve. I agree. But um, I think this is a real positive move by Epic. And, you know, I, I think, you know, I think this is great. I think this is really great. And anyone that's saying that this is a shit move or Epic Games shouldn't be doing this is, uh, they have issues, man. I think this is great. This is really, really cool. I like this sort of thing. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think making it 100% revenue for six months is, you know, Epic is going to be losing a lot of money if games start selling a lot, right? I still think Epic should have done it at 10% because there's still server costs to cover and other stuff to cover. So they should have at least, in my opinion, they should have done it at 10%. But clearly this is a publicity stunt to get more people on board. But you know what? Good for them. Exactly, Steve. Exactly. That's what it is. It's risk versus reward. And if it rewards them with long-term revenue, Epic Games don't care. See, that doesn't make sense to me, Maori. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Why are you a slave to Steam? What did Gabe do for you? Did he buy you a Ferrari or did he pay for your house or what did he do? And Team Fortress free and Portal free. I wouldn't know, Snowy. I wouldn't know, but, uh, it's good to know that you know. Well, I'm not even sure if that's good to know. Now I'm now I want to know how you know, and I, I, I really don't want to know the answer to that question either. Marathon. It looks like Marathon is changing directions in what it is. It's going to... Well, we all know that Bungie has been going through a term... Look. It's okay, Snowy. You don't have to explain yourself. But um, Marathon seems to be uh, in a lot of trouble. They don't want a monopoly. They're just trying to get customers. How does Sony get customers away from Xbox? They make games exclusive. 
It's that simple. That's not doing a monopoly. If you want to talk about a monopoly, what you're doing in and what all the consumers are doing is creating a monopoly with Steam. You're, you're literally complaining about the thing you're doing. You are literally, with everyone else, creating a monopoly for Steam. Because you're giving the publishers no choice to go anywhere else. They have to go to Steam because all of you say so. You see how it works? It's the same thing. You're literally doing the same thing. Word for word. Not just you, but the whole Steam community. It works both ways, dude. You guys have literally created a, a monopoly for Steam. Because they wanted it exclusive over there. I mean, eventually it's going to be Cloud Wars, Sully. What's going to happen then? Mate, there is a lot of things that's anti-consumer. Why are digital games 70 quid? That is anti-consumer. There's no box. There's no manual. There's no disc. So why are you paying 70 quid for a digital download? Why is it cheaper to go to a shop and buy a game in a plastic box with a disc and some pamphlets than it is to download a game. That's anti-consumer. No way. We'll come back to this news in just a sec. Larian Studios is done with the Baldur's Gate series. Halo Season 2 sticks to landing. Ugh, I knew they were going to do that. No. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Geo Media lost yet another top editor on Thursday as Kotaku's editor in chief Jen Glennon announced her resignation from atop the gaming news outlet. Her exit continues the beleaguered media's company's losing streak of bleeding top talent, shutting down websites and undermining its wider credibility. I mean, when you post articles like they do, they fucking deserve it. They goddamn deserve it. Some personal news, I've resigned from Kotaku and Jim Spanfella is an herb. Glennon wrote on X on Thursday, referring to GEO Media CEO and the unflattering nickname staffers past and present have bestowed upon him. In a follow-up post, Glennon said she was feeling great about her decision. Neither GEO Media nor Glennon immediately responded to a request. I mean, th they literally became a fucking shithole. They had so many people that were posting in there. I mean, I'm not sure if you lot remember the Final Fantasy 16 post 
That was fucking awful. Awful. That was so awful, that post. They shut all over it because Clive was the main actor. Main protagonist. Saying the game was sexist and uh, gendercist. No, I like Steam. I use Steam. I'm just not a slave to Steam. Like, Steam is my main PC platform, yeah? Because that's where my friends buy their games. But, Alan Wake came out. There ain't no way in hell I'm not going to buy that game. I don't care what platform it's on. I don't care if it was on GOG. I would still have paid money and bought it to play it. It's that simple. I'm not going to not play a game because it's on Epic Game Store. And my problem with people is that just because it's on a launcher that co that is a 2 megabyte download, they won't download it. <laughs> no, just, hey, God gives you DRM free, man. God gives you DRM free. I didn't say the, uh, the Amazon Twitch launcher. I didn't I didn't I didn't stoop to a uh, that level. But yeah, it looks like um, Marathon is changing to a cast of heroes because the person that's now taken over Marathon is an ex Valorant uh, creative director. This is going to get canned, yeah. This is this is not this is this is this is this is not happening. And Bungie is gonna lose the company as well. Sony is gonna take it over. Here's a question for you guys. What's gonna maybe not for the next generation? Alright. Let me rephrase the question. How many of you play games on PC? I mean, there's only 30 of you in this chat room. So how many of you actually play games on PC? There's no trick question here. It's a legit question. So that's one. So two said, I don't. But Devastator, you would do, so I'm going to count that. Jay's free. So that's 11 out of 28. But he will. <laughs> so it counts. All right. So here's my question. What do you mean, bullets? But anyway, here's my question, right? Here's my question. Why is it that none of you care that, y you know, you buy f digital on Steam, but when it comes to PlayStation and Xbox, you may, you're, you're a real stickler for physical. Why is it when it comes to Steam, you just don't give a shit, but when it comes to anything else, if it's not physical, you don't buy. And before you say 
that there is no physical games on PC? You lie. You lie. You lie. You should go and buy this. Physical. It goddamn exists. So go and buy it. You'll need a CD-ROM to play it, but go buy it. It's a physical disc. They released a physical version of this game. It does exist. This one does. Unbelievably brick, but this one does. Fuck no, Devastator. Are you crazy? <laughs> Two copies. Fuck off. Uh, uh, bullets, I'm the same. I only buy a rare few games physical just so I can have as a collection on my wall more than anything else. But this is, this is bad, right? They've completely changed the direction. But also, when you think about extraction shooters... Right? Hasn't that era... Hasn't that era gone? Steve, I'm the same. That's why I'm very, very eagerly awaiting uh, Dawn Trail. So I can buy that. Oh, wait, 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 Brick. You meant PC cases. Sorry, I thought you meant the actual DVD case. No, no, PC cases, they don't come with uh, trays anymore. You need to get that custom shit, man. Or a USB for that. They don't come with cases. I don't even think ATX comes with them anymore. Uh, not really. I mean, I guess you could kind of call it that in the loosest sense. Helldivers is jump into a planet, shoot a bunch of aliens and then leave. Uh, st Brick, me too, man, me too. That's why... Uh... When I walked into, what was it, Computer Exchange, I found these two. The Metal Collector's Ed Limited Edition for Halo 3. And uh, Gears 5, Steel Box, Steel Case Edition, in mint condition. That shit was purchased. <laughs> and the Halo 3 uh, collector's edition was like £5. I was like, dude, that's, that's, that's too good of a deal to pass up. £5? I'll take it. Now, I would have been so much more interested in The Last of Us Factions. But then I like The Last of Us storyline, the whole, you know, the whole thing around it. Uh, it's supposed to be free to play. I don't deserve Gears 5 Steelbook. <laughs> it was only £2. It was cheaper than Halo 3. How's it going, Benaya? Welcome to the stream. My comment stats. 
Fallout 4. You'd expect to see this as Fallout 76, but no. It looks like people are going and playing Fallout 4. It's seen a 33% player increase following the TV series trailer. I think that's awesome. One ninety nine, too much? I know, man, I know. It should have been one buck. I mean, let's face it. This worth ten bucks, fifteen bucks. This one buck, right? One P? You know what? Maybe even that's asking too much. They should have just given it to me at this point. They should have just said, you know what? No one wants this. We'll just give it to you for free. You was on Fallout 4 this week. <laughs> but I think this is not, this is like a really good... Uh, I mean, it just shows, right? That if a series is very good or it's, you know, it's got a lot of hype behind it, people will go and try the games that are related to it. And uh, it's good to see the resurgence in Fallout 4. I'm going to write. <laughs> oh. Do you know what, Leaf? Uh, it would have been really cool. Really, really cool. It would have been cool. There was one made, right? Uh, but it was made by a fan. The fan release of Fallout. And we're getting a fair new Fallout followers today, so hi. Yeah, Fallout London. God damn. Mate, how can you take any advice from Bungie? They can't even make a game. <laughs> you don't take advice from fucking Bungie. Alright. I've got some videos for us to watch. We've got an Alone in the Dark review. Don't know if you guys want to watch that. Unless there's something you guys want me to react to. Or there's a funny skit with uh, Dragon's Dogma. Destiny was successful because of Activision. The moment you removed Activision, Destiny became shit. So, what does that tell you? What does that tell you, Benaya? Alright, alright. Before we get into anything else... Let's do this. We're going to have to do this, chat. We're going to have to do this. We're going to have to do this. Right? We're going to have to do this. All right. We're going to have to do this. Uh, Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Let's do it. Ideally, I didn't want to change this, but let's change it to this anyway. All right. All 
Destiny 2. Launch. Can you guys see anything in text? Okay, there we go. This was done with the help of Vicarious Visions. For Vicarious Visions, I'm just going to put VV and High Moon. Right. Uh, what was the next uh, DLC that came along? Was it not Curse of a... Was it not um, Osiris? What was the next DLC that came along? Let me see if I can quickly find the list. Uh, Destiny 2 DLC list. So then we had Curse of Osiris. This was done by Bungie. Now, the original Destiny 2 was pretty good, right? Curse of Osiris was solely done by Bungie, and it was fucking shit, right? Warmind. You remember that great expansion? That was done by VV and High Moon. Even the uh, real-life events that were plugged into the game were done. By Vicarious Visions. Then you had. Forsaken. Guess who that was done by. Primarily. VV. And High Moon. Guess who. Shadowkeep was done by. Bungie. Guess who Beyond Light was done by. Bungie! The one thing that they actually did that was decent, and the only reason this was decent, primarily, is because of the legendary campaign, was Bungie. The legendary campaign that they introduced with the Witch Queen was, the, was literally the Shining Star. So, we can see here that Warmind and Forsaken, which were the crowning... Uh, expansions and DLC for Destiny 2 were done by Vicarious Visions and High Moon which are Activision run studios. Even the base launch was done by Activision staff. They pretty much did the majority of the work. The one time that Bungie decided to run it solo with Curse of Osiris it almost killed the game. And then they decided to do that with Shadowkeep and Beyond Light because obviously they were on their own, and they almost killed the game. And then came Witch Queen, and they got bought out by Sony. And then they did Lightfall. And that almost killed the game. So the only real successes that they've had are these three. Everything else has been lukewarm to shit. Witch Queen was good. But the reason why people enjoyed Witch Queen was because of the campaign introducing a legendary mode. The difficulty that they added to the campaign actually made it really, really fun to play. It was actually challenging rather than, you know, you're pressing one button and everyone dies. Now, when you go back to Destiny 1, Bungie was on a fucking roll, right? All right, all right, Destiny, the base game, they fucked up the story. But I still enjoyed it, and a lot of people enjoyed it. But the story was all over the place. Then you had, uh, what was the, it wasn't House of the Wolves? It was something else.
they had very little involvement in the way Warmind and Forsaken turned out. All the game modes and the designs were done by Vicarious Visions and High Moon. Sure, Bungie still had a hand in it. But it was done by Vicarious Visions and High Moon. What I'm saying here is, Destiny 2, anything that was actually worth a damn was spearheaded by Activision. And the moment Activision left them after Forsaken, Shadowkeep was shit. Beyond Light was shit. Uh, Witch Queen was decent, but it introduced the worst possible thing that they could do. And they, they introduced weapon crafting, which means, hey... They took the looter shooter out of the looter shooter. Good fucking job, Bungie. Um, and then they did Lightfall, which was probably the worst expansion ever created. In fact, I would say Kong is a better game than Lightfall. Lightfall was so shit that it shouldn't have allowed... It should never have existed. That's how shit it was. That Kong is a better game. Right? That's how shit it is. And this is coming from someone that absolutely loved and adored Destiny. I was a massive Destiny fan. I pretty much lived in this game. But from Shadowkeep onwards, this game just fell apart. Hard. Hard. And it never recovered. And, you know... Put it this way, right? Put it this way. Put it this way. Put it this way. You know that the game has hit rock bottom when they have to bring Cade back. Right? When you have to go and bring Cade back to try and ramp up sales, and even that doesn't work to get your pre-orders, that's when you know that you've hit goddamn rock bottom with the franchise. That's how you know. When you go and introduce Cade to come back and it doesn't work, that's how you know it's hit rock bottom. Have a good night, gaming movies. I think Marathon's going to get cancelled. I mean, it's all about Gummy. For me, the next game for Destiny... I mean, after uh, the final shape, there's no more expansions for Destiny anyway, so they're wrapping it up. They're only doing what, what they're called episodes going forward. So it's basically gone into maintenance mode. They'll be doing uh, just three small updates a year. So Destiny basically goes into maintenance mode. It's done. It's finished. Um, but I'm more interested to see what this Gummy Bears is. The codename Gummy Bears. There's also that NetEase game as well, right? That we've not seen yet. That they've, they're still making. The mobile game. Dude. Bungie has been a horrible, horrible purchase for Sony. There's nothing good about that purchase. Nothing at all. I mean, it's just going to be a Valorant clone from what they say. Right? And I'm just so disappointed because... Man, I... I I, love, I used to love this game, man. I lived in this game. This game was my life. Yeah, Vanny, the... Where is it? Marathon's creative direction has reportedly shifted under Ziegler, who's the ex-Valorant creative director, um, leadership, moving away from custom player characters in favor of a selectable cast of heroes. So he's basically turning it into a Valorant style game. So 
at this point, is it even still going to be an extraction shooter? Or are they going to change it entirely? But whatever it is, it looks like it's changing direction and what it what it's supposed to be. And as someone said in chat, Bungie's, you know, staff are not going to be happy. And I don't blame them. I'd be pissed as well. It was supposed to end today, though. Hmm. Not sure, buddy. I'm not sure. Uh, has anyone bought Final Fantasy XIV? Because this dude bought it on Xbox, but it says no valid service account. So are you able to play it? <laughs> that marathon will be the... Will be a hero extraction? <laughs> Whatever next, Vanny. <laughs> Is it Vanny or Vani? Your PC account, but not Xbox. Happening, the Elite Series X Digital Edition probably won't have a dev kit since it's the same thing. Uh, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going on that assumption. So you can actually run it? That's weird. I mean, I'm going to play on PC until the game officially launches. Well, until, uh, what is it called? Dawn Trail launches. But hey, for those of you that are playing, that want to play, we can play on Discord. It is cross-play anyway, so it doesn't matter where you play on, what platform you play. So someone wanted us to check out this review. Do you guys want to check out this review? It is a Alone in the Dark review. Shall we check it out? Here is points. React to the review. Ella Bonaya, don't disrupt. Don't do, don't 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 be dissing my phone stars, man. All they needed was a bunch of waifus to put in there that you could foam up, and that game would have just printed money. That game would have printed money. See, what they need is me being there, me as the director. See? See? Everyone in chat now is interested in Foam Stars if it was designed like I said. Because everyone wouldn't even be playing the game. They'd just be sitting there firing that gun at the waifus. <laughs> He's Australian, by the way. I'd pay premium for it. Hey, Vlad, how's it going? Uh, we're talking about Foam Stars. Just mocking foam stars a little bit. Live a life of lies or anime. <laughs> That's it, is that? Hey guys, this video is sponsored by NVIDIA and MSI. So make sure to stick around until the end of the video for a breakdown on their new top tier MSI Titan 18HX A14V laptop. When it comes to survival horror, the first series that most people are probably going to think of is undoubtedly going to be Resident Evil. And with good reason, I mean Capcom's original 1996 masterpiece inspired a whole genre of games for decades to come. Man, remember when games used to be good like this? Man, that dog scared the living but shit out of, of what me. What Resident Evil did was first achieved years prior on the PC, with infogrames alone in the dark and night. Back in the day, that dog that jumped out of that window... Where was it? That one there? That scared the living shit out of me when I played it back in the day. But a lot of what Resident Evil did... You forgot Foam Stars was a thing? But if it had a bunch of waifus in there, where you could just uh, have physics, you know, physics, where you could just squirt. Yeah, totally not a perv. Was first achieved <laughs> prior on the PC, with infogrames alone in the dark, a 1992 PC game which also featured puzzle solving, fixed hey, dubs, angles, I haven't mentioned a whole spooky mansion to explore. 
Plus, it also featured Lovecraftian lore before that stuff was overused and obnoxious. It went on to create an entire franchise of its own to mixed results, with the last game made being so crappy that it more or less killed off the series. Holy shit! Results, with the last game made being... 19! God damn. <laughs> Fuck you know. You know shit is bad when it gets a 19. And it has that little reviews. So crappy that it more or less killed off the series. Don't you dare, Benaya. Don't you even dare. That is until now. Because here we are in 2024, and there's finally another new entry with the simply titled Alone in the Dark, a reboot or reimagining, I guess, developed by Pieces Interactive. Cool. Whose only other real claim to fame is a couple of expansion packs for Titan Quest. Me. And you'd be forgiven for having low expectations when you go into this one. I mean, I know I sure did. But what pleasantly surprised me is that I soon realized those concerns were misguided on account of Alone in the Dark actually being pretty damn good. I mean, it's not amazing or flawless, and it's definitely not on the same caliber or scale as the recent Resident Evil remakes, but this just feels like a game that knows exactly what it is, along with what its limitations are, and it never tries to do more than it can handle. And despite a few hiccups here and there, it was a mostly solid experience from beginning to end that I more or less played through in a couple of sittings. Oh, well, in that case, have a seat. Let me make you a drink. The story again focuses on those original two main characters, Emily Hartwood and Edward Carnby. The story is that Emily and Edward are heading to a mental institution named Deserto Manor to check up on Emily's uncle Jeremy who's had a long history of mental illness. Jeremy is convinced he's possessed by a figure called the Dark Man, not to be confused with the Sam Raimi film with the same name. Take it now! Take it! Please! Take the fucking elephant! And he sent Emily- Yeah chat, take the goddamn elephant! Uh, Vlad's, yeah, they pretty much killed it. A letter which appears to be a veiled cry for help. And no worries, the Diablo. horror has taught me anything, it's that you're better off just ignoring letters you receive from loved ones. I got a letter. Anyway, much like... Han, if you send me a letter, I'm gonna burn it. Deserto Manor was in the original game, this is a large ominous structure surrounded by the wilderness. And when Emily and Edward arrive, the entire place appears to be deserted. Let's just find him first. However, after breaking in and snooping around for a bit, they run into the many residents, all who act a bit weird and detached. This is private property. You can't just barge in here. Not in like a creepy or an evil way, but just that kind of offbeat, disconnected personalities you'd expect to see in a mental health facility. Who is your uncle, darling? Jeremy. Am I right? Soon turns out that Jeremy's gone missing and the staff don't know where he is. And after going through his room and his belongings, it appears there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye, taking a supernatural turn soon after. Oh, wow. That's striking. And it's all That's actually him in the photo, right? Game, with the backdrop of DeSetto and Jeremy's character being core components to the story. I mean, the little girl named Grace was also a key figure in the sequel, Alone in the Dark 2. And the ending even kind of hints that we might be seeing a bit more of her character if a sequel for this remake is ever developed. There's even one scene later on where it uses the fixed camera placement from the original game. And if you've got the deluxe edition, you can turn on the same character models from the original 1992 DOS version as well. Okay, that's cool. That is damn cool. That is damn cool. Vlads, I've bought mine on day one, and it is a pile of shit. But if they get it working on PC, I'll have a lot of use for it. I've got more use on my MetaQuest 2 because I can run my Xbox through it, uh, Xbox Cloud, than I do on my uh, goddamn PSVR 2. Such a waste of money. And this is the thing, right? I actually was saying back in the day when it first came out, where are the exclusive PlayStation games to give it a unique selling point? To push it ahead? To give it value? And everyone was like, Oh, look at all these games she's got. I've got uh, 50 games. And I'm like, yeah, but they're already out on other VR hardware that everyone else has goddamn got. You know, they're re-releasing old games. 
Where's the new shit? Where's Half-Life Alex? They were supposed to get Half-Life Alex. Where is it? Also, much like the original game, you're again given the option to play as either Emily or Edward. Though in the grand scheme of things, this really doesn't change all that much. Edward acts like your typical hard-boiled, liquor-soaked private investigator, smoking cigarettes and swilling booze, and he more or less interrogates everyone he comes into contact with. What can you tell me about Jeremy? I wouldn't want to go into details about his condition. Whereas Emily seems much more distant and less inclined to open up. Good evening, Miss Hartwood. Either way, though, you'll still experience most of the same cinematics, just with different results. God, I'm, I'm glad to see you. I was afraid you had left. Me? You're the one who just disappeared. Detective Carney, how did you... Where did you go? I was just talking to Dr. Gray. You disappeared. I mean, during that arrival to DeSetto, for instance, after you first run into the maid, if you're playing as Edward, he basically just forces himself up the stairs so he can investigate Jeremy's room. Excellent. Thank you, madam. Whereas if you're playing as Emily, the maid is a bit more receptive to their inquiries, and then they're even more or less just let right in soon after by Grace. Follow me. But regardless of which one you've gone with, you still end up searching through his belongings in his room minutes later, so that overall outcome is still going to be the same. And even the puzzles, and more importantly, the puzzle solutions, are the exact same for each playthrough. There are some unique cinematics for each character, and even a whole unique sequence they each get, which unveils a bit of their backstory before they came to Dursetto. But it's definitely not quite in the same vein as the kind of thing we got in the Resident Evil 2 remake. You know, where you got to play as either Leon or Claire. Welcome to the madhouse, detective. Still though, there is still a good reason to play through both stories. Because along the way, you're always collecting these unique items, some of which can be only found in that character's campaign. And a few of which actually unlock hidden endings. Aside from that though, there's also minor gameplay differences. For instance, Emily... See, I don't like that, right? I don't like that. When a game forces you to play multiple times to get, like, the best ending, I don't like that. Yes, I'm a hypocrite because I'm going to do it for uh, Alan Wake 2. I still don't like it, though. I just want a game that you play, you have one ending, the ending they intended you to see, the canon ending, and that's it. That's all I want to see. I really don't like games with multiple endings. It it actually puts me off playing them. And yes, Half-Life Alex is amazing. Maybe I'll start streaming some VR games. Maybe you guys will enjoy that. Emily gets an automatic pistol, whereas Edward has a revolver. And she does seem to be slightly faster than he does when sprinting. But yeah, dog, like where that main story is concerned, you're still getting the exact same experience regardless of who you're playing as. And either way, it doesn't take too long before that supernatural shit hits the fan. Because it seems old Jeremy's gone and got himself locked away in some kind of ultimate reality. I mean, yeah, what a dumbass. This can't be. It is kind of cool in that way too, how the game has this habit of randomly shifting things up as you suddenly teleport into this frightening, nightmarish version of the real world. And the way that the other characters seem aware of the whole thing, but also a bit aloof, keeps that whole premise really interesting. You know surprising things, Carpet. But you see, Leaf Blaze, uh, Leaf Storm, that's not bad. An anime, that's not bad because you save it just before that fight. You fight it and you let it escape, you see the ending. Then you fight it and you kill it and you see the ending. You don't have to go and replay the whole damn game. The same with Ghost of Tsushima. Now here's a question for Ghost of Tsushima without spoiling it. At the end, you I'm not going to say the names because there are people in the chat that might not have played it or know it. And it's coming out on PC. It's a phenomenal game. You should absolutely buy it and play it. It's great. But at the end, when you have to make that choice to do it or not do it. Obviously, the DLC that plays after has an impact on what he did. If I remember correctly. Does it change if you don't do it? I don't actually know. Yeah, Silent Hill 3 had, like, a stupid amount of endings. Kind of reminds me a lot of Silent Hill 2, where everyone you talk to seems to be lost in their own little world. Like, they know something that you don't, and they're not willing to share it. Yeah, and I don't Mom, like him, Lex. Are you blind or something? 
Another big part of why I enjoyed playing through this so much is because I end up walking through a guide. Recent third person horror game I played, this one actually has consideration for the play. No, it's horror, after. And it doesn't bog you down with constant cinematics and exposition. But actually, it's about halfway through. For lengthy periods of time to explore the manor and look for all the clues and important I items. I think. What do we got? Here? I can't remember now. You'll eventually find shortcuts to lessen the amount of time spent backtracking, along with just exploring rooms and areas you previously couldn't access. It did, did it? That kind of thing it made did. it impossible to put down because it felt like every time I was about to stop playing and take a break, I'd find some new key or item that just kept me engaged. I'm sure you understand. You can also tailor just how easy or hard you want to make the puzzles as well. Being able to turn things on like visual clues or icons on the map to help you out. But then you can also just turn all of this stuff off if you want to figure the whole thing 76. out yourself. Oh yeah, and I gotta say too how I love how they've included a pair of bolt cutters. And I'm absolutely convinced at this point that there's like some kind of unwritten law between all these game devs that dictates that if you're making a survival horror game, you have to have a pair of bolt cutters. I will just say though, if you're going to turn off all those assistance features, well, then you also might want to keep a pen and paper handy, because some of the puzzles are incredibly complex and confusing. In fact, off the back of that, like, there is a bit of inconsistency in that regard, and I found that the puzzles were often absurdly easy, you know, to the point where, like, the item you need to get past something is literally an arm's length away from the object itself. But then on the other hand, certain puzzles are so incredibly vague and the solution even more obscure that when I ended up solving them, I was kind of dumbfounded that what I tried actually worked. I'll just say too that if you don't like trying to figure out safe combinations, you know, four or five times, well, this ain't the game for you either. Visually too, Alone in the Dark has a lot of fantastic moments. There's some really creepy imagery here and there throughout the campaign, making good use of the lighting and the sound design to heighten the mood. The whole running theme is that you're using this talisman to unlock portals which let you explore all these different memories and this has let them have a lot of variety to the environments. I mean outside of the manor itself you've got the dimly lit... Sh I mean look at it this way right? They expected to sell 5 million copies of that game. That's what they forecast themselves. To sell 5 million copies of Ronin. Releasing it on the same day or the same window as uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Mate, they released, they decided to release Ronin and Horizon during the same window as Dragon's Dogma 2. No matter how shit that game is running, people are still going to pay money and buy it. And they're going to choose that game over the other two. What I don't get is why Sony first butchered their game with Elden Ring. And then went ahead and butchered two of their games <laughs> with Dragon's Dogma. I guess some people just never learn. Streets of New Orleans, you've got a swamp, a cemetery, underground crypts, an otherworldly library and a dockyard drenched in thick fog. Should be worth noting too, though, that this is not a big budget AAA. Hey, at least uh, Wolong on Game Pass got an 80, right? That game got a 76. That's a whopping four points. I mean, that's staggering. That's mountains in difference. Experience. And you'll definitely notice a few weaker aspects to the presentation, like the mirrors, for instance, which is the absolute litmus test for figuring out if a game is using the Unreal Engine. The biggest one, though, is how all of the character models look. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you're not wrong. Now, I mean, it's no big secret that Edward is modeled after David Harbour and Emily is modeled after Joe Coma. And what this means is that these two characters look like actual people because obviously their likeness has been scanned across. Everyone else, though, looks like a video game character and they're not at all to the same level of detail and consistency. Now, this is not an overall bad thing, but it is just the expected outcome, I guess, when you've only got the budget to properly scan two people into your game. That's unacceptable. There is also a bit of tonal whiplash as well in terms of the overall atmosphere, because you'll often go from exploring some kind of genuinely scary environment, you know, being chased after by literal monsters. I mean, Ninja Gaiden was a good game. And snap back to reality. Oops, there goes gravity. They didn't sell well, but they're a good game. Bizarre conversation with someone in broad daylight, while this quirky jazz music plays in the background. 
<laughs> without a rider. A few moments later. Are you sure you want to? We could stay here and drink the night away. What? Towards the end of the story, it... That woman looks crazy. It does go from day to night and things do feel a bit more sinister. But it just never seems to maintain that horror tone as much early on, which is a bit of a shame. Because when the game is doing its best to unnerve you, I've got to say, man, it does a bang-up fucking job of it. The good news, too, is that you're not going to be spending all your time just running around looking for items, making small talk and reading people's diaries. And Alone in the Dark manages to offer up enough combat so the whole thing stays interesting. And this stuff right here is proper old-school survival horror shooting controls. That being, you move like a slow, lumbering asshole. We're raising a weapon, aiming and... I mean, we can stop here if you guys want. If you guys don't want to see any more of this review. Overall, it looks like he's enjoying it. And he's liking it. It has its quirkiness issues. It has its animation issues. It has its design issues. But overall, it looks like he actually enjoyed it. But yeah, it looks like a good review. I will post it in chat because it is getting into spoiler territory. I was thinking the same thing. Ali, in fact, please do uh, give it a view. Actually, I don't really think it matters. My dude's a very, very big channel. Uh, yeah, I think they made their money back easy. I mean, there's nothing to Helldivers. It's a bare-bones game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Helldivers 2 is bare-budget at best. You know, nothing really uh, going on there. Alright, since there's nothing else anyone wants to think, I've been sent a parody video, so I'm going to put that on. And then we can call it a night there because uh, it is getting late. Uh, tomorrow's stream might be a game stream, unless there's some news. But there was one thing I wanted to talk about before we did finish, so let's watch this video that I'm going to put on now. That I've been sent. Please don't be a weird one. Chat, don't send me weird shit. I knew you had it in you. You know, I always picked Peach when I played Mario 2. Because she let you float across the pits instead of having to be good at platforming? Maybe. That's Anyways, cold, man. Uh, congrats, Peach. Thank you, thank you. I would like to take this time to thank my parents, my agents, my contemporaries, Lara, Samus, Ellie. What you trailblazing boss-ass bitches do is so inspiring. I am just happy to have a seat at the table. And lastly, I'd like to thank the big guy upstairs. Fungor, the mushroom god. <laughs> oh, hey, it's -a me, Mario. Have you seen my socks? Did you try the sock drawer? I did not to try the sock drawer. It's always the last place in Europe, right? <laughs> okay. Excuse me? Aren't you going to congratulate your girl on her big game? What the big game? We talked about this, huh? Oh, the show time. You're serious about that. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I remember you were thinking about it, and I remember me saying it's not a great time to be branching out, but awkward. <laughs> Wait, did you tell her she can't have her own game? Uh, no, 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 no. Don't misquote Mario. Okay, you just have to be very careful when you're branching out with this stuff. It has to be very calculated, you know? I mean, I already have my freeloading brother running around town with a vacuum on his back pretending to bust ghosts. <laughs> the star of a game is kind of Mario's thing. Well, it's her thing now, too. This game is gorgeous and it's incredibly fun. And you should be proud. Peach does it all in this one. She's an actress, a chef, a cowboy, a detective, a ninja, a mermaid, a superhero, and more. Wow, that's a lot of jobs. How many jobs do you have? 
I only have the one job. What is it? I fix the toilets. Look, it is 2024. Okay, and I've been a fan favorite for over 25 years. I think this is more than fair. Yeah, man. My wife has a bunch of jobs, brings home all the bacon, and I don't mind it at all. It's called being a feminist. I think the word you're looking for is parasite. Look, Mario, <laughs> Princess Peach Showtime is happening. I don't need your permission, but I would love your support. <laughs> oh, you're right. She's right. Mario's being a real sfigato over here. I'm sorry, babe. Peachy, you have my full support. To celebrate, why don't you pick the show tonight? Whatever you want to watch. Oh, Love is Blind? F that, no way! Okay, we'll watch a Love is Blind. Even though the show is trash, I see you at home. All right, are you ready? It's showtime! So how do you like it? This is fine. Fine? I finally have my own game and that's all you have to say? No, I, I like it. It's a clever design and, and very cute and definitely pure Nintendo. It's just, it's a little too easy. Oh. Yeah, I think maybe it's just not made for me. That's fair. Not every game is made for everyone. My kid's gonna love it though. Hark, doth my ears deceive me or does someone need to be saved? Stand back and I shall slay this beast of the baby games. <laughs> Come on, Xbox and Switch is awesome. I'm just not the right demographic for this one. Well then. We shall embark on a perilous quest in Dragon's Dogma 2. You are the Arisen. You have been marked for death by a deadly dragon. We shall fight monsters, loot dungeons, and solve geopolitical conflicts. Oh, that sounds fun. Oh, Switch, is, is that okay? Of course. That's the thing about me. I don't turn into a jealous B-word when you play other consoles. They offer something different, and that's okay. I am who I am, and I'm comfortable with that. Wow, such emotional intelligence. Are you done, Greta Gainberg? I guess so. Do you want to go ice skating? Oh, I'll grab my skates. Have fun. <laughs> All right, Xbox Dragons Dogma 2, let's go. I love a good challenge. Nope, too much challenge. Too hard, too many choices. <laughs> Ugh, I don't know, Xbox. I just, I don't have time for games that are so involved anymore. So much reading. Okay, so let me get this straight. You are looking for a game that's not too easy and not too hard. Right, something in the middle. I like things in the middle. You know, my son has this little nickname for me. He calls me Mr. Mid. Yeah, that checks out. And you need oh, to be shit. Active. Yeah, but not overly dependent on, you know. Mr. Skill? Yeah, light on skill. But not for little kids, but also not overly involved. Not Man's like getting burned. It's fine, but like cool cartoony. Cool cartoony. Yeah, you know, like violence and swearing and Okay. Is that all? Oh, uh, throw some nostalgia in there too. Dude, there's nothing like that coming out anytime s Actually, I think I do have something for you. Yeah? Hold on to your butts. This might hurt a little. Oh, the new South Park game! I f***ing love these games! Fuck yeah, let's go, mother f***er! Oh, oh, look at me, I'm a f***ing cartoon! I can do anything! Ooh, watch me fly! Wait, <laughs> it's not that kind of- <sighs> I'm good. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching. Stick around, we have some bloopers on this That's actual right. video at the end of the video if you want to see that. And if you want to see the uncut, uncensored bloopers, make sure to join our Patreon. Thank you to- That was funny. That was funny. That was good. That was good. My dude got roasted. <laughs> he got roasted hard. That was good. That was a good video. I thought it was going to be a weird one. Whoever sent me that, you did good, man. You did good. Uh, what channel is that? This one is uh, Reckless Comedy. They are quite popular, actually. They've got 1.1 million subscribers. See, chat, that's what you need to do. You need to get me 1.1 million subscribers. Final Fantasy VII on PS1 still the best. Shall we check that one out? Yeah, but that's a movie. We're only 1.1. <laughs> uh, but if I can hit 10k by the end of the year, I'll be happy.
Yeah, that's not going to happen anytime soon, Leaf. Sadly. But yeah, they've got a lot of content. They're quite short. Ah, Viva La Dirt. I like them too. I like the double jump one. That was pretty awesome. Well, it's only March. But yeah, uh, let me put this uh, link in the chat for those of you that want to check their channel out. I like that channel. They're, they're good. What's going on there? So, all right, John. So, chat. The question that I wanted to ask earlier, that, so like I said, um, just what I've heard. Take nothing for granted. Nothing confirmed. Um. And I, you know, I cannot verify any of this is real. Now, as of April, we're supposed to get some news coming for Xbox before the end of April. And that's supposed to be the icebreaker for what we should expect in December. So my question to you guys is this. Do you think that Xbox waiting until December to release anything big in terms of news is too late oh it could do a 14 stream but I guess we can uh, play with I can help you guys out You don't think it's too late? Xbox has one showcase. One planned showcase, and that is the one for the summer showcase. What other showcase do they have? Diablo, we all know that you're my contact that works at Microsoft. You can drop the act. You know, I think it's, the, the cat was out of the bag when you changed your name to green. So I think everyone now knows that you are my contact at Microsoft. The fact that Devastator has it in green and Steve has it in green is no, is no, uh, there's no correlation to that. That's just a coincidence. Like I said, it, it, this is just an open question, an open forum question that I just wanted to ask because uh, it's a uh... <laughs> Xbox has the developer direct, the third party partner showcase. Okay, the third party partner showcase was a massive letdown. The developer direct had more people talking than showing gameplay. So I haven't been wowed by them yet. I want to be wowed. Maybe my standards are a little too high, but I want to be wowed by Microsoft. I want them to blow my socks off like they did with the 360, like they did with the OG Xbox. Look, man, you, you're the one that came out and started feigning, I don't work for Microsoft. The, only someone that does work for Microsoft is going to say, I don't work for Microsoft. Right, chat? Xbox is doing great with their cadence. I mean, they've, they've, they missed their target again, right? They promised one game per quarter. They missed it again. I'm not God. <laughs> I 
Nah, I think that look, <clears throat> look. I think that would be a really bad idea, Alpha One. I think what Microsoft need to do now is have a really strong finish. Like they need to get in there, stick it right in, and give one big push, and just do the job. They need to they need to proper push and finish on a massive high. I am trying to make this sound as weird as humanly possible. But they need to I'm sorry, John. But no, all jokes aside, they really need to have a strong finish. <laughs> I can't even say it properly. Because if they want to have a good momentum going into the next generation, they need to finish on a high. Stop it, anime. <laughs> No matter what I say now. They can jump. <laughs> so, I totally disagree with that. Momentum is everything. And, you know, if they can get to... I mean, they're already on 27 million consoles, right? By the end of this generation, if they can get to 35 or even 40 million, that would be deemed a success in my books for Xbox. But... If they can get those really high quality games and start building that momentum this year and then push even you know further with Gears uh, 6 for 2025, you've got GTA 6 for 2025, you're going to have other big games coming as well, you know, maybe uh, Perfect Dark, you know, the really big games coming out to finish on that high, then when they go into 2026... And if the con new generation console is launching in 26, it will give people that incentive to say, right, this is amazing. I'm buying the next console because just look at how the last two years was. They've just been pumping out amazing, high quality games that I want to play. And it's great because not everyone wants a PC before anyone says, I can play on PC. Not everyone wants a PC. And there are a lot of people who just prefer console before its simplicity. At the end of the day, PC need driver updates, all this. On console, it's kind of automatic. It's always one button and that's it. So it's very simple, very noob friendly. But would you want to see... What would you want to see as third party exclusive? Oh... That's a good question. Personally, me, I'd like to see Final Fantasy 17. I'd like to see what sort of a needle that game would push on Xbox. I mean, GTA 6 is never going to be exclusive. But if they can make it exclusive for a week... I mean, realistically. <laughs> hey, look. We're talking about a trillion dollar company here. Um, if they really want it, they can get it. Right? Diablo. I mean, uh, Bonaya. And don't forget, Microsoft was offered Final Fantasy 16 first for exclusive rights. And they turned it down. So Microsoft did have first dibs on Final Fantasy 16. So... Final Fantasy 17 isn't a far stretch. Yeah, but that was multi-platform brick. I'm saying exclusive. Uh, I don't think Microsoft's trillions would be enough to make it a month, Mr. Digit. I think Microsoft's market cap would go from 3 trillion down to like maybe 50p. It's not up to Sony. Like I said, Microsoft were given first dibs 
for Final Fantasy 16, and they turned it down. Have a good night, Steve. Dude, if one game can sell 5 million Xboxes, that's crazy, right? That's just one game. Right? Yakuza's already guaranteed on Xbox, so I can't... There's no reason to make that exclusive. And they, those games come on Game Pass anyway. So, that's pointless. See, this is, this, this is what I want Microsoft to come out and say. And talk about. Arthur, that's the point, right? So, uh, I've been trying to reach out to anyone from the Microsoft team for an interview, uh, offline interview, or an informal chat. I finally got a response saying no, um, and just to check out the social channels for any updates. Uh, so that's, that was disappointing. But what I want to know is what's the plan? What's the move? Where is it going? What's the vision? Because the problem that every Xbox fan is, well, not everyone, but the problem that people are having, outside of the ones that have gone off the rails on social media, um, is that they can't see the vision. Everyone is making up their own vision, but no one can see the vision that is there because it's not clear. Do you see what I mean? There's no real vision there for them to see what it is that they want to do. Even if they buy Sega, those games will remain multi-platform. They're not going to be exclusive. In fact, going forward, going forward, you'll see, and you'll say in the future that I was right, any company that Microsoft buys, any company that they buy, that's not a Xbox game studio company, that is like ZeniMax, Activision Blizzard, or Sega, or whatever, those games will appear on Game Pass Day 1. But they will also be released multi-platform day one as well. Sappho, the amount of roadblocks that Xbox has put in front on Final Fantasy XIV is crazy. Nikkei would do well, but it would need to be a full game. Not what it is right now. Right now it's just an idle shooter, right? Uh, they will. I reckon. I mean, Diablo that could happen, but I can also see it going multi-platform day one. There's no vision. We we don't. You know, you can't sit here and tell me what they're doing day one. Everyone is saying bollocks that this is going to happen. Bollocks that's going to happen. But the way it's, the way Microsoft has been is you, you just don't know. I don't know. I am definitely buying the Xbox version once Dawn Trail comes out. I'm not going to double dip. Um, but I'm I'm definitely buying Dawn Trail when it comes out. But at the end of the day, like a. Uh, What's the vision? Jade, they're not going to stop buying. They're going to continue buying because they're putting all their eggs into one basket for a cloud future. And if that future materializes, Xbox wins instantly. They go from third place to first overnight. And there's nothing anyone can do to stop them.
Uh, sorry, I must have missed that, Diablo. Red Dead Redemption 3? I mean, that would be cool. But it would be very expensive. But, um... Yeah, it's just no one really knows what Division is. Well, the senior people at the top of the level, they leave because they're no longer needed, right? They become redundant. Uh, they're just dupes, so they're not needed anymore. Update. Xbox version of N... Inotria, last song, has been suspended. With regard to the Xbox release, we have decided in order to ensure a superior experience for PC and PlayStation 5 players to re-evaluate the possibility of an Xbox release post-launch. So Xbox gets fucked over again. And this is what happens. I don't even know what the fuck this game is, but... And do you know why this is? Do you know why? Because they've got no presence in Europe and they've got no presence in Japan. They've only got a small presence in America. Now for people saying that it doesn't matter how many consoles they sell, this is why it matters how many fucking consoles they sell. Stop saying it. Because it does matter. It does matter. This is what happens. Now, I know there's going to be a bunch of people coping. Lol, Inotria. I mean, I don't even know what the fuck this game is. But, you know, it could be a great game. It could be an absolutely shit game. I don't know. But my point still stands. You need a console presence. Because if you don't have a console presence, they don't release their games. Because you don't... The, the chances of them making money on your platform is small. So Microsoft needs to get aggressive and say, hey, you bloody better make this game on my platform. And I want it to be exclusive. Not this one, but third parties. Remember, big games will always be on Xbox. I mean, they've become a laughing stock. So what's the vision? Uh, they did, Jay. Well, Arthur, that's because people are conditioned not to buy games, right? People on Xbox are conditioned not to buy games. And I don't blame them. Uh, let's check out what game this is. An eternity it spent playing out in the tortured halls of my mind. Mentors, friends, and lover alike turn against you. Whatever end we meet, it has been a delight to compose the song of change together. Sappho. When you have 45 studios and don't release any games, you are very reliant on third-party studios. Those 45 studios aren't releasing anything. And I know people keep saying, oh, just wait and they're going to come. Oh, wait and they're going to come. At this point, I could have, you know, I could have another baby and have that baby grow up to be a teenager, go to college, go to university... And people are still going to be telling me, oh, wait, the games are still coming. Like, I get they've got 45 studios, but they're not releasing anything. 
what have we seen from Microsoft First Party that's not ZeniMax or Activision? That's not ZeniMax. We've seen ZeniMax. We've seen Activision Blizzard. What have we seen from Microsoft? One game. One game in what? Six years. In all those studios. It's not enough. And... And for the record, they're not out yet. They're not out. Those games aren't out. For all you know, Hellblade 2's release date can come and they say, right, we're really sorry. We need more time to bake the game. It's been delayed by another six months. That's it. The same for Talborn. Until they have... I mean, look at Starfield. Starfield was supposed to arrive... A year before it came and on the last minute they turned around and said, yeah, we're not ready. We have to delay it. So until those games are out, or at least 100% confirmed release date, because even the release dates these days with, and this doesn't just apply to Microsoft, this applies to everyone that, you know, puts out a release date. None of them are trustworthy anymore because all they need to do is put a black border with a bit of text and that's it. Sea of Thieves is six years old. Uh, Forza Motorsport was a flop. Horizon was fantastic. Really good game, by the way. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush was great. But Hi-Fi Rush is uh, ZeniMax. So if we've got Playground doing two games. Uh, and we've got uh, Rare doing a game. So, so basically, we've got two studios out of a possible, what, 20? That's released games? I mean, Forza Motorsport was a waste of money. That was a colossal waste of money. What I'm saying is... These studios aren't shit studios. They are really talented studios, right? These are really good studios that make really good games. But nothing is coming out. Like, where's State of Decay 3? That's been in hiatus for how many years? That's not my opinion, Sappho. That's everyone's opinion. The majority of the people's opinion. The game didn't even crack the top 50 on Steam. Now, I get it's available on Game Pass and stuff, but so is Starfield, and so is Hi-Fi Rush, and so is every other game. If the game is good, it sells. You watch when Gran Turismo 7 comes on play, uh, PC. It's going to crack into the top 20. There are so many games that are coming out where are they? It's like a Souls game. That parrying though, man. That's that Daigo from Street Fighter. Lies of P looks better, yeah.
That just reminds me of Souls, and honestly, I'm bored. I don't understand why everyone has to release a Souls ah, game today now. Swirling maelstrom of creation, magnificent, is it not? You know, Souls games used to mean something. But now everyone is trying to jump on that bandwagon. Quantum Souls? Okay, not that one. Which one? Is it a game? Ah, I see. Quantum Souls. I get it. I get it. I'm just too slow today. I'm slow on the uptake. I get what he means. He's saying it's shit. I thought singing Kumbaya would honestly work for Xbox. They're just becoming more of a laughing stock. Yeah, that's why that's why I understood. I agree, Sefo. I agree. I think they tried to lean into Lies of P a bit too much. Is Ninja Gaiden a Souls like? No, I mean I think it's uh it taps into it a little bit with its difficulty, but it's not really a Souls. This game looks insane. That's far enough. I'm here on the business of the United States government. God is not the only business here. Stay out of my way. Stand aside. I do not take orders from anyone. Turn around, boy. Go home. Look, pal, I don't know who you are, but I know who you are. Captain America's hero dancing around in red, white, and blue. That's the Walking Dead guy, right? The one with the dreadlocks. Was his name Peyton? That's him, right? Something Peyton. I mean, it could be Devastator. Uh, Skydance. Says the man dressed like an overgrown house cat. That shield that you hide behind. Uh, this is in game. And does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. Whether the in game, whether the finished product is going to be like this or not is different, but this is in game. Inotria's last song is skipping Xbox at launch. I'd guess because they can't get this Xbox Series S version ready for certification. Regarding the release on Xbox, we have decided in interest of ensuring a superior experience for PC and PlayStation players. Um, whatever it is. Whatever the issue is. The moment you see that it's skipping Xbox, it undermines Xbox even more. I'd really hope it is not because of the Series S, though. That would truly suck. That would truly suck if it is because of the Series S. I said Rise of the Ronin looked bad when Sony showed it. 
Don't you remember when we watched the showcase? I said this game looks really bad. It doesn't look optimized. It doesn't even run solid 60. It was dipping below 20 or into the 20 FPSs. I said this. I'm pretty sure that guy is Peyton though, right? I'm pretty sure he's this guy. Peyton Walking Dead. Him. He's this guy. That's who it is. Carrie Peyton, that's his name. That's the guy that's playing that role. This series S should never have happened. I will always have that stance. I understand why they did it, but it had been a fawn in their backside on a number of occasions now. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. But I, I, I'm really hoping it's not the series S. Because Microsoft still intends to release the Series S next gen. I wouldn't say saved it. Look at Tim Dog lapping that shit up. My dude is... Uh, Instantly lapping that up. He's, he's doing his victory lap. What a sad individual. Uh, who knows, Benaya? Who knows? Shinji Mikami establishes new studio, Kamui. What's this all about? As director and producer of the Resident Evil and Evil Women series and more, Mikami has created numerous blockbuster hits in 1996 for the release of Resident Evil, on which he acted as director. He greatly contributed to the popularization of the survival horror genre. After leaving Tango Gameworks, he established Kamui. So my dude... Uh, was the executive producer on Ghostwire Tokyo and Hi-Fi Rush at Zenimax, left, created Kamui. It should be noted that the blurb mentions this in both the English and Japanese versions of the website. The official name is this. Mikami himself has not officially announced the company's establishment, so its inclusion on the website... Might have been on error on Shadows of the Damned. Hella remastered developer. So essentially, he didn't want to work for Microsoft. So he created his own studio. Well, Lee Storm, he left Microsoft Game Studios because he didn't want to work under Microsoft. That's why he left. Should we should we should we listen to this? Should we listen? Should we give this dude a listen? Let's give him a listen. Let, let, let's react to what he's going to say. No? Okay. Okay. You guys don't really like him. I won't let people tell me this game has bad graphics. Why would anyone tell you the game has bad graphics? So this person here, right? Check this out. This person here... 
said, Hey, I bought my game on CD keys. Why do people uh, have a go at me for buying games from CD keys or websites like CD keys, right? So I said, it's because some people associate it with uh, money laundering websites like G2A. And then this person got into a right fit and started attacking me for no reason. They ask a question, you respond with an answer, and because they didn't like your answer, they get all their cronies, and I became public enemy number one for giving an answer. <laughs> oh, Forbidden West's story was weak. Zero Dawn was phenomenal, though. But I will say this, though. The DLC, the DLC for Forbidden West is great. It is good. It is way better than Forbidden West. It is really good. Worth playing. If you love Zero Dawn, you will love the DLC. Uh, I think it's called Burning Shores. Really, really good DLC. I had a lot of fun with that one. That just was so much better than the the sequel. Hey Liz, welcome back to another edition of Crying in Your Car. With Brisket, with the Brisket. Um, Look, why does it sound like he's always insulting gamers the way he says it? Like, it, it almost sounds like he's calling everyone gay. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, it's the accent. Or maybe it's just the way he's saying it. But I always feel like, why do you have to say it like that? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I know he doesn't mean anything like that before anyone gets into a... T you know, he has no malicious intent like that. Hey, Liz! Welcome back to another edition of Crying in Your Car. With Brisket. With the Brisket. Um my dude is trying to... My dude is trying... God damn it, Benaya! <laughs> My dude is trying to own that crying for a while now. Um, so I don't think I'm an Xbox fanboy anymore. I think something shifted drastically, and it's not me. <laughs> um, so at the beginning of this generation, all he doesn't think he's an Xbox fanboy anymore. I think they're running low on those. All of us were lauding that Xbox had the most powerful console. That was the thing. We were all super, super hyped that, hey, Xbox has got the power narrative. They've still had the power narrative all the way through. Um, I don't, you know, there's obviously been differences in performance. That's got to do with how you build your game. It's got nothing to do with the console itself, you know. There's a, so. I mean, the power narrative, uh, just to be clear, uh, a, a lot of the games are built with the PlayStation being the base console. So they're built for the PlayStation before they're ported over to Xbox. And secondly, Sony has a parity clause in place. So Xbox can't, the Xbox version can't be better. So they try to get the Xbox version as close as possible, but never overtake. Exactly, Sefo. So here's my thing. PlayStation's come out with a, or there's a leak saying that they're going to come out with a mid-gen refresh. How many people told me that wasn't going to happen, and yet you guys don't listen? I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Who the fuck said it wasn't going to happen? Everyone expected it to happen. They did it with a PS4. It was going to happen. One other thing I'm going to tell you it's going to happen is that Xbox will come out with a console to compete with that. Bull. Shit. Because they don't have to. The Xbox Series X is powerful enough right now where if it's actually goddamn utilized, it will actually perform even better. All of you guys lauding this whole, I think it's great that Xbox dodged a bullet because they, they, they you know, they're not going to bring out a mid-gen refresh. Sure, Phil Spencer said that. He also said that they always want to have the power narrative going forward. So you can pick and choose the things that people say and ride with those and call them facts, but they're not. So why does Xbox need to do this? 
I mean, it's a good question, right? Why does Xbox need to do it if they're not selling consoles? Well, you simply cannot be in third place. My dude, they've been in third place for literally a goddamn decade. And have the least powerful console. I mean, the Xbox One wasn't more powerful, I'll give it that. Um, but since the launch of the PS, the Series X, they've been lost. Sappho, it's not needed. Look, I remember watching a Digital Foundry video where they were comparing the two GPUs from the PS5 and the Series X, right? The PS5 was being utilized at 80%, right? Whereas the Xbox One was being utilized at 56% of... It was, it was between uh, 55 and 58%. That's a huge difference between 80 and even... I mean, even if you put it to 60%, right? That's a 20% difference. So, Xbox has a lot of room to improve. The problem with the Xbox Series X is that not even Microsoft is utilizing its features. Microsoft showcase... You know, talked about their AI built-in capabilities. It's been three years and they haven't used it once in any game. And now that Sony has announced that they're going to be using machine learning, now Microsoft is coming out and saying, yeah, 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 we're going to do it too. We've got it built in on the hardware. Like, they're not utilizing the hardware. I mean, I get the third-party games not utilizing it because of the parity. That I get, right? That's a contractual thing. But their first-party games aren't doing it either. And I expect Microsoft's first party to be leading cutting edge on the Series X. I expect when their first-party games come out to be the best of the best to show other publishers what they can do with the hardware. And they're not doing that. If you want to compete in the space, then you have to have an answer. My answer is the Nintendo Switch. They just give no, they just, there's just no shits given. They release an Android tablet and it sells 10 million, you know, 110 million copies. And I guess that this will be very, very telling. Um, and as well, one other thing is they'll say, like I might be the only Xbox fanboy left that isn't talking about getting a PC or already have one. Like most of these Xbox guys that you, you watch and listen to, they all got a PC. I got a PC. You know, that's where I do my, you know, videos. That's where I do my uh, thumbnails. That's where I do my streams. That's where I do my gaming as well as console gaming. As you guys have seen, I've been playing on Xbox as well. I was playing on Xbox just the other, the other stream. But uh, yeah, I have a PC as well. By the way, apparently, if any of you in chat have a PC, you are not a you are not an Xbox uh, fanboy or fangirl. Hey, Power Boss, why aren't they utilizing it? Uh, good question. Good question. Like, if I was Microsoft, I would make well. There's two ways, right? I think if Game Pass had a subscription base of say. I don't know, 60 million, you'd see the quality of the production of the games go up. Right? Because they could afford to do that. Now, I know people are going to say they're a trillion dollar company. It doesn't work like that. That, that. that literally means nothing. Okay? This notion that they're a trillion dollar company and they can swallow the cost, no one likes to lose money. Every company, every department inside Microsoft has a budget. They have their profit and loss, and if they start making losses, they get shut down. Or people disappear in order to turn it into a profitable department again, right? It doesn't matter how much money that studio is earning, the, the main company is earning. That doesn't matter at all. The reality is, 
Xbox as a division has a profit and loss. Just like Surface uh, devices with their tablets and laptops, every department has a profit and loss that they have to manage. So that's, you know, honestly, I just think they're not, because their Game Pass sales aren't enough and games don't sell enough, that could be a factor why they're not pushing the hardware themselves. Lost their characters? What do you mean? What? No way. Uh, we're near the end. Uh, power bus. Where are you reading this? We're investigating an issue where some player characters, players' character data is unavailable on login, as well as players being prompted to re-input their date of birth. More information will be provided within the hour. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about, right? When they're not making money, people disappear. You see? We were literally just talking about this. We were literally just talking about this. Every department has a profit and loss. And if they're not making money, people disappear. In Bungie's case, it's your characters disappearing. Oh, man. Oh, oh that's bad. That is bad. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. Good way to add content. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is bad. This is bad. That's bad. But I told you, if they're not making money, it's gone. They disappear. That's why they don't care about having another console. I care about having another console. And what I want to see Xbox do is deliver on the promise of this, of this console. And look, if they can't do that with this console, then I'm absolutely fine with paying US another 650 or 700 to, uh, to, to get the delivery of the promise on this console. You may consider that a failure, and I guess, it, you know, realistically, when you look at it, it is a failure. Um, but for me, I want to play my games at... We I want to play my they... games at, you know, 60 FPS 4K. You're not getting 60 FPS 4K. And I'd love to have the ability to have ray tracing, but that's not hugely important to me. But I want to at least have 60 FPS upscaled 4K. Okay, upscaled. You that's get. all I'm looking for. Now... If we drop that down to say 1440p or 1080 and the games can run at 120 fps that's also what i'm looking for that option if you want to talk about performance graphical okay, option. Okay. and people will say we'll just go and get a pc i'm not oh. a pc guy i'm never going to be a pc guy i don't want to have pcs littered around my house 
I travel a lot. I want to be able to bring my Xbox wherever I go, and that's what I do. Um, console suits me just fine, and that's never going to change. But it's a weird narrative. Like, okay, like if you don't care, I get that. If you don't care, I get that. That's fine. But like this whole lauding that the Xbox hasn't, or isn't, you think isn't going to do a refresh, is just pretty ridiculous in my mind. They're already working on consoles in the background. You know, the other narrative that I keep hearing is people going, I would rather they focus on games. They're not going to take the fucking hardware team and put them on games. Yeah, that's something I never understood, right? I see a lot of people saying this. Like, you got the community team reporting on, like, issues or talking to the community, and they go, why don't you go and fix the fucking game? And it's like, my dude doesn't know how to code, man. If he went and tried to fix a bug, he'd probably end up accidentally clicking on Control-Alt-Delete and then saving that shit to the server, and then wiping the whole database out off as well at the same time, miraculously. Like, people don't understand that there are people that are specific to a job and some people just aren't catered for a job. I don't code. So if someone told me to go fix a bug, I'd laugh at them. I break games. I break websites. That's my job. My job is to find bugs. Brick, what he's saying is that he wants the simplicity of a console. What did Powerboss say? We already know they cancelled the digital work console working on a new console instead. Uh, see, I, I've had conflicting reports, Powerboss, from uh, some people. Some people are saying it's still in works and it's coming. Some say it's not. I've heard the white one is definitely not happening. The white Series X is definitely not happening. Um, but I've heard a digital one is happening, which doesn't make really any sense. Uh, but I've also, I mean, there's so many things flying around right now for Xbox. And that's why I don't really talk about them on my videos. I'll talk about them here, but I won't make videos on it because it's pointless. I don't want to make a video on, oh guys, guess what? Today we're going to talk about the possibility that maybe uh, this rumor is going to come true, but it might not come true, but it might come true, but it might not be coming true. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I'll talk about it here because this is an open forum and we can discuss things. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, apparently late April we're supposed to hear something from Xbox and then see some stuff, um, see at least a hardware at the showcase, it's from what I've heard. Again, it's just it's just bullshit rumors, right? I'm not gonna sit here and prant about it, and I'm not gonna make a video on it to say, "Hey, this is happening," because I don't like talking about that sort of shit. Um, but again, like the same source also told me that games are coming, something big is coming at the end of the year, and that's why I asked you guys that question. Jamala, you're not wrong. Damn, that are some good sources, Benaya. I like it. I like it. All right, that hardware team, they work on hardware. And they will continue to work on hardware until they release new hardware. And when that new hardware comes out, they'll continue to work on the next hardware. So this, I'd rather they focus on games, is, not, is poorly thought out. Um... Anyway, we're going to be having this discussion and this debate on K. Asante's uh, Gaming Circle podcast. That's awful, Brick. I mean, I guess you live up to your name, right? You break your own console. Safa, you could be right. I mean, the discussion and stuff that I'm hearing about the handheld is heating up. 
I'd rather you look where you're driving. <laughs> Regarding the release, yeah, th this is just really bad. Ensuring a superior experience for PC and PlayStation 5 players. That's just really bad. How about a few pointers before your Final Fantasy XIV adventure begins? I wonder how Dragon's Dogma 2 runs on uh, GeForce now. That would probably be where I'd play it. A 4080? What's this? Nope. Uh, Sappho, what's that about? Oh, you mean that uh, uh, this game? This game's going to flop. It did not look interesting at all. It did not look interesting at all. In Dragon's Dogma 2, the world is seamless and there are few loading screens. Monsters can even follow you into towns and fight with residents and guards, resulting in unpredictable battles. What's that actually about Starfield? Hey, it's Hulk Hogan. I don't know, chat. I don't know. But here is hoping that uh, they sort some shit out. My Xbox Series X is definitely on its last legs. Games went boot up about 50% of the time without a hard reset. That's rough. This is crazy, right? The title Horizon Forbidden West was cracked by Fairlight only 30 seconds after its release on Steam. And this is why uh, DRM exists, right? That always online, this is why it exists. Instead of going after publishers for doing always online, go after these fuckers for pirating the games. If these fuckers didn't exist, DRM wouldn't be that big of an issue. But this is why they do DRM, to protect their IP. But that must be awful. Is it time to start a conversation about PlayStation using Denuvo in their future releases if they want to continue pursuing PC? The PC community hates their guts anyway, so it's not like they're going to ever win them over. And they're destroying the potential sales by being nice.
You want a Jack Sparrow version too? Exactly, Suffer. Like, this is what it's pointing to. This is why, like, I don't like DRM. But I totally get why it's there. And when I see, like, some people bitching and crying about DRM. And how it's bad and all this and whatnot. At the end of the day, if this wasn't happening, you wouldn't get the DRM. And instead of going after the companies that are enforcing DRM, it should be these fuckers that are getting the hate because they're the ones that are forcing publishers' hands to use DRM. But hey, once it goes to cloud, it'll, they won't be able to crack anything, right? They won't be able to steal anything. Piracy does not equal lost sale. Of course it does. Don't be stupid. You may not intend to buy it right now, but you want to play it, so you'll buy it when it goes on sale. Still a lost sale. But I think we're that's it. I want to try this game out. There's a... What's this? I want to try this game. There's a seven hour demo, right? You have the collector's edition? Do you like it? Uh, there's a seven hour demo for the game, yeah. But you pre all your games with Steam are preserved. That's the one good thing I like about Steam. On the Xbox Store. I don't know if it's available on the PC Store. But Vlad... All your games on Steam are preserved. What's the problem? Every single game you purchase is preserved. I mean, I'll give it a try, Jay. There's a demo, so... Because if Steam ever shuts down, there's a clause in... Uh, their terms and conditions that says if Steam ever shuts down every game that you own you will be able to download a DRM free version of it to keep it will work with the launcher without the launcher it will anime there's a cl the version that you get to download is an unfit you know is the non-Steam version of the game. The one that doesn't have all the Steam uh, hookups. But that's if Steam disappears. It's in the terms of service. With all the DLC, everything that you purchased, you can claim. Everything that you purchased, you can download if they shut down. Okay, this one is actually true. <laughs> Thanks, Xbox. I mean, 
that's going to be the talking point for a long time now, even though that game doesn't look very good. I think I might play some 14 tomorrow since it's launching tomorrow, unless there's some bigger news that we need to talk about. That's the other thing, right? They actually took Microsoft's money and then ran away. That's cold, man. Inotria, the last song, launches August 21. Xbox Series version no longer planned. I mean, it looks pants anyway, but... Uh, I did. I did. That was one of the first stories we covered. And it's an important one because uh, they don't really have a monopoly, do they? They don't really have a monopoly. That popping is nasty. Now, game present. What you're saying is basically stealing the game and making multiple copies of a license that you don't have the legal right for. You're essentially saying that you want multiple right, uh, rights to a license that you don't have the right for. That's different, dude. That is different. That's not game preservation. That's just uh, pirating extra copies. Was I the only one that noticed that as well? Anime, I thought I was... that those legs at the back looked wrong, didn't it? Mate, what is this guy on, man? Uh, for Rise of the Ronin. But anyway, let me just show that animation. And I think we're pretty much at the end of this now. Because there's nothing left to chat about. And I'm not just going to figure it out for nothing. I'm going to call it quits. Where is the horse? Where's the horse? Just look at the horse's animation. It looks like it's a retarded horse at the back. Look at it. Look at that galloping at the back. It looks like it's a donkey. If you if you purchase a game, you have one license. Whether it's a physical or a digital, it's one license. If you give it to someone and they make a backup of it so they can play, that is illegal. Because they don't have the legal right to have that copy of the game. They don't have a they haven't paid for a license to play that game. That horse just looks... It's just like a galloping donkey, right? I know a lot of people like to kind of push the narrative that piracy is good because it enables, uh, you know, game preservation. But that's just cope. 
Kalau kalau macam 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 Again, for your own personal use, not to give to other people. The moment you give it to someone else who doesn't have the license, that is illegal. You're not, you're not listening to what I'm saying, Vlad. You bought the game, you bought one license. That license belongs to you. If you back it up and give it to someone else and they play it without paying for it, they are playing an illegal copy of the game. It's that simple. Uh, Brick, I agree. Uh, J Gaming, this is PS2, man. Nah, this is this is running on the PS5. This game looks. This game does not thing. This game does. This 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 just does not look. <laughs> it's like his left leg is like completely just it does drop J Gaming it does it does This game drops, like when Sony was showcasing this, I was saying it was dropping down to like 20, you know, sub 20s. That's because Ghost of Tsushima is a great game. I mean, just look at that shadow. Look at that shadow. It's, it's like, it's like uh, something out of Minecraft. We've gone back into the Minecraft shadows. If it was wrong. God damn it, Brick. But yeah. All right, folks. That's it. That's me done. It is a uh, Jesus. It's 1 a.m. Where's my burn? That <laughs> shit almost had you. Burnout was cool. I want Ridge Racer. Every time we had a console generation, I miss the fact that we don't get a, you know uh, a Ridge Racer game anymore. That was that was my favorite racing game. But yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. If there's a bit of news, we'll cover a bit of news and uh, we'll kind of do that at the same time as uh, playing some games. Uh, I know Final Fantasy fourteen is officially launching tomorrow, so might do a bit of that. So we'll see. Have a good evening, folks. Thanks so much for hanging out tonight, and I'll see you later. Peace out. Good night, and remain legend. Don't forget to like and subscribe, folks. All right, so that's no longer working. Bye.